All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Reed Gill and I am with Baba Free Group of Institutions. I will be hosting this session for you guys. Once again, I'd like to welcome everyone to the second day of our two day international webinar on artificial intelligence and machine learning. I hope everyone is in good health and is having a wonderful time. We hope to make this experience worth your time. This webinar is being conducted by the Department of Computer Science BFGI in collaboration with Moroccan Society of Engineering Sciences and Technology, which is in Morocco, Scientific Innovation Research Group in Egypt, National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology, Chandigarh, and Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, which goes by the name of IEEE. It's in Canada. These are some of the leading institutes working on creating new technology and uh, various disciplines of engineering, disseminating that technology to other departments, promoting educational opportunities among students and researchers. These institutes have a vital role in bridging the gaps between developing technology and its extension to other sections of the society. They've also been working on creating collaborations with many national and international institutes with an objective of motivating students and entrepreneurs in the disciplines related to engineering. This webinar is going to be our fourth collaboration together. I would like to thank our collaborators on behalf of BFGI for their kind support in making this webinar possible. Uh, we successfully concluded the first day of our webinar yesterday. Uh, where we heard from some of the well-renowned scientists, uh, Dr. Jayanta, Dr. Hannah Hachimi, and Dr. K. Martin. Their insight into artificial intelligence and its various applications was very much appreciated by the audience. Uh, we also got to learn about some detailed case studies and technical aspects of the artificial intelligence, which was uh, new to many people. All in all, we had a great session yesterday. Uh, we had posted a link for the feedback for day one yesterday, but uh, there were some technical issues with that. So we are going to be posting the link again today towards the end of the webinar. So uh, there's going to be two different links for day one and day two. Uh, please take the time to fill out both of those forms and let us know how the experience was for you. We are going to extend our yesterday session with a new set of panelists who will share their expertise on the topics of artificial intelligence and machine learning. We will start the session after inauguration speech by Honorable Dr. Manish Jindal, head of the department, computer science. Uh, please join me in welcoming Mr. Jindal to the webinar. Hello, good morning to all. I'm Manish Jindal working in capacity uh, as head, uh, head department computer science. First of all, I would like to congratulate organizers and Department of Computer Science for the international webinar on AI and machine uh, ML. So it gives me immense pleasure in welcoming all of you to the second day of our international webinar on AI and ML. This institution was established with a vision to serve the society with the promise of quality education. We seeing this popularity of AI and ML, our department had decided to expand this area of research and organized for day two. So first speaker is Dr. Ozen Ozer, PhD in mathematics, is from Turkey, Kirkla University, Turkey. And the topic is importance of mathematics in AI and ML. Dr. Hamid Kasmai, PhD in applied mathematics from Islamai Azad University, Iran. And the topic is machine learning and, and its applications. And the third, uh, third keynote speaker is Dr. Meher Chand from Baba Fred Group of Institutions and PhD in mathematics. And the topic is supervised and unsupervised learning using MATLAB. So we are very grateful to the management for their endless support in organizing this webinar and guiding us in making it beneficial for national and international attendees. With this, all the best for today's session. Thank you.
thank you so much, Mr. Jindal, for your kind words. We are grateful for your vision towards the webinar. Uh, this share is a wonderful opportunity for our attendees. Uh, speaking of which, we are now going to commence our today's session. Uh, it's time to welcome our first expert panelist, Dr. Ozan Ozer, with us. Dr. Ozan Ozer is a PhD in mathematics and is with us from Turkey. She is currently appointed as an associate professor at the Kirklareli University in Turkey. She also has fulfilled many other vital roles in the institute, such as head of branch of algebra, Erasmus coordinator, and many more. Dr. Ozer is a valued member of many scientific associations and groups, some of which include Turkish Mathematics Association, a number theory group, uh, Ali and Big Data group, Applied Mathematical Modeling group, and there are many more in this list. She has worked on about a dozen research projects. Uh, she has over 20 publications in ISI journal and over 20 published in international journals. She also has published an international scientific book on a collection of Paleon equation and also has numerous citations to her credit. Besides all that, uh, Dr. Ozer is a prestigious member of the editorial board of 24 different international journals, uh, some of which include Journal of Analysis and Number Theory, Egyptian Computer Science Journal, International Journal of Mathematics Research, American Journal of Biomedical Sciences and Research. She has served as a member of organizer committee and scientific committee for multiple scientific programs, conferences and workshops. Uh, the, limited, the limited time that we have on hands does not allow me to go into details of all the achievements of Dr. Ozer. So we are going to cut it short here and let's get back to our honorable guest of the hour. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Dr. Ozen Ozer with us. Off to you, Dr. Ozer. Uh, thank you so much for your nice uh, introducing uh, me. Uh, dear respected professors, colleagues and the friends, welcome to my presentation on mathematics related with artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, I would like to start with my introducing myself. My name is Özen Özer. I got my PhD in 2014 on number theory in mathematics in Turkey. I became an associated professor doctor in 2018. In fact, this is my first presentation on the artificial intelligence and machine learning with mathematics. Uh, in fact, I am a mathematician and I am working on the pure math like cryptology, number theory, diaphant sets, uh, real quadratic number fields, algebra, analysis, etc. Um, I don't want to bother you with my presentation. That is why I will tell something as simple with mathematics and the artificial intelligence and also machine learning. Uh, I put many uh, important things in my presentation, but uh, I will ignore some of them. Uh, it just will try to say some basic things uh, for you, which will be useful for yourself. Uh, let us start my presentation. Uh, and you can see some of my research topics in here. If you want to collaborate with me, you can contact with me. Uh, the title of my presentation is Importance of Mathematics in uh, Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. Uh, I will try to give some basic notions and useful suggestions as I can do. Uh, in this work, uh, I would like to say something about the discrete structure, which is named by mathematics and some subject and topics of mathematics. Uh, as you know, mathematics plays an important role in machine learning and artificial intelligence. Also, many of these problems in machine learning are notoriously hard and even those that are theoretically tractable become interactable in practice with abundant and stability. While many problems are hard in the worst case, the problem of practical interest are often can be solved in the some mathematical subjects and models. 
Many discrete problems in machine learning can possess beneficially structure. Uh, such structures has been an important uh, ingredient in many successful solution strategies. Uh, for example, include some modularity, marginal polytopies, symmetries, and like that. Uh, I said something about uh, basic things uh, on discrete structure in machine learning. Uh, can I continue? Yes, continue. Ah, okay. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, machine learning algorithms discrete mathematics with uh, significant topics and combinatorics, as well as application in computer vision, NLP, biology, and network analysis are all active areas of research uh, and each with an increasingly large body of foundational knowledge. We can describe a person working in the field of artificial intelligence who doesn't know mathematics is like a politician who doesn't know how to proceed. So I will directly go to the main object of this article or this uh, lecture. A popular recommendation uh, for learning mathematics for uh, artificial intelligence goes something like this. Uh, we need to learn linear algebra, probability, multivariate calculus, optimization, and a few other topics I will say later. Uh, for example, while studying multivariate calculus, you will come across the famous Stokes theorem, but it turns out that there is a high chance that it won't be of any immediate use to you in practice and even reading research paper. So I recommend that you only go for the concepts and the notions for the topics and I will say some essential topics in each subject like that. Uh, for linear algebra, there are many topics in linear algebra subject. This is also a part of pure mathematics. We have to know vectors, uh, topics in it, scalars addition, scalar multiplication, inner product, you have to know this information, uh, not too very detailed, but superficial. Uh, other is matrices, addition between matrices, identity matrices, some types of spatial matrices, uh, and uh, invertible matrices, inverse rank trace, like that. Also, the other important topics are eigen values, eigen vectors, concept, intuition, significance, principle, component analysis, concept, properties, singular value decomposition, and like that. You can also see uh, some topics of the linear algebra and their presentations uh, with application in visual in here. Uh, for calculus, especially we need differential calculus and multivariable calculus for machine learning, uh, functions, derivation, some types of common rules of uh, differential, gradient are very important for AE and machine learning. Also, vector and matrix calculus uh, are important in linear algebra and also calculus. We can add some topics related with differential calculus, stochastic convex functions and like that as you see. Later I will also uh, share my presentation with you. You can uh, look at with detail so uh, we have very restriction time uh, i try to pass them uh, very quickly please no worry uh, the another topic is probability the most important rule in probability is bias rule or bias theorem uh, some uh, samples you can see uh, in the visual uh, also, random variables, expectation, joint and conditional, some rules, conjugate, priorities, independent events, probability, density functions, 
uh, you can say. These topics also related with probability and machine learning, mutual exclusivity, conditional probability, determinism, and probability theory, law, law of large numbers, central limit theorem, and like that. Uh, now I will say something about the optimization. Just look at that these pictures and uh, topics are useful for machine learning and I will explain them later. Linear programming, combinatorial optimization and like that. Uh, also, there are some topics, entropy, cross-entropy, KL, divergence, mutual information, Markov chain, transition, uh, matrix uh, are very useful for uh, these topics. Now I want to say something about uh, uh, machine learning before saying something about math. Uh, math uh, related with machine learning, we can describe machine learning process as follows with four main stage, as you see, problem framing, data analysis, model building, and application. In here, second, third, and the fourth are related with the uh, mathematics. Uh, in the first stage, a uh, model to classify images as spam or not spam, model to classify tumor cells as malignant or benign, model to improve customer experiences, by routing costs into different categories so that costs can be answered by personnel with the right expertise. Model to predict if a loan will charge off after the duration of the loan. Model to predict price of a house based on different features or predictors and so on. In the second, it is related with math and uh, it includes data visualization of features, handling missing data, handling categorical data, encoding class labels, normalization and standardization of features, features engineering and like that. Uh, the third stage is also related with the mathematics. This is where you select the model that you would like to use, for example, linear regression, logistic regression, uh, key NN, key means, Monte Carlo simulation, time series analysis, and like that. And the last one is the application. The final machine learning model is put into production to start improving the customer experience or increasing productivity or deciding if a bank should approve credit to a borrow, borrower like that. Uh, as I said, you most of the mathematical skills you need for building a machine learning model are used in stage two, three and four, which is data analysis. Uh, model building and application. Uh, both discrete mathematics and machine learning are broad topics but related with each other. So there are definitely concepts you learn in a discrete mathematics that will help you in machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, for example, you learn ways to use functions to map items from one data set to items in another data and what properties uh, of those functions. There are many types of functions help us to develop machine learning algorithms. Uh, discrete mathematics is needed to see mathematical structures in the object you work with and understand their properties. This ability is important for software engineers, data scientists, security and the financial analysis. We cover the basic notions and the results such as combinatorial graphs, probability, number theory that are universally needed in the discrete mathematics. Uh, PAC learning is closely related to discrete geometry. An example, you can see this lemma and VC dimension is central PAC. A learning concept. Discrete geometry is useful for anything that is related to 
special spatial trees for example kd trees and they are used for knn and also uh, other nonlinear dimensionality reduction graphical models are families of distributions with conditional independence ex uh, expressed as graphs a really specific example would be algorithms for hidden marco models they are pretty straightforward application of dynamic programming. Probabilistic algorithm, that is a huge area. This is sort of introduction of the discrete matrices and the probability. Uh, graph theory is a hot new field in machine learning, like social networks uh, uh, and most algorithms in this area are rooted in the discrete mathematics. Also, combinatorics is another area that pops up particularly in the design of non-parametric tests, for example, permutation methods. Discrete differential geometry is another area of algorithm design, particularly relevant to animation and image processing. Mathematical thinking is cruel in all areas of computer science, algorithms, bioinformatics, computer graphics, data science, machine learning, and like that. We know that the most important tools used in discrete mathematics, induction, recursion, logic, number theory, graph theory, invariant examples, and optimality. Uh, in here, important ideas and concepts for yourself are uh, only using basic mathematics. It is necessary as some uh, require programming in Python or MATLAB or uh, some other computer programs. Uh, for combinatorics and probability, counting is one of the basic mathematical related tasks we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. The main question here is the following. If we need to count something, can we do anything better than just counting all objects one by one? We need, do we need to create a list of all your phone numbers to ensure that there are enough phone numbers for everyone? Is there a way to tell that our algorithm will run in a reasonable time before implementing and actually running it. Uh, all these questions are addressed by a mathematical field called combinatorics. This subject's ability to distinguish these settings in real life and algorithmic problems. For graph theory, we can see how GPS systems find shortest routes, how engineers design integrated circuits, how bi biologists assemble genomes and like that. We also implement an algorithm which finds an optimal assignment of students to school by using graph theory. Uh, number theory and cryptology, uh, as you know, this is also my topic. I have many uh, published papers on it. Uh, I can help you in this topic for learning or collaborate with you if you want to work with me in this topic. Uh, we all learn numbers from the childhood, some of we like or some of hate. People have been wondering about the numbers properties for thousands of years. Famous 20th century mathematician Hardy once said the theory of numbers has always been regarded as one of the most obviously useless, useless branches of pure mathematics, but just after 30 years, his death, an algorithm for encryption of secret message was developed using achievements of the number theory especially in RSA algorithm. Uh, it was called uh, RSA after the names of their others. And implementation is probably the most frequently used computer program in the world in these days. Without it, nobody would be able to make secure payments over the internet or even log in security, securely to email and other personal services. There are very, 
very many uh, branches of mathematics that are helpful to learn machine learning, but the basics of calculus, algebra, linear algebra, number theory, cryptology uh, are very important, as I said to you before. The most important problem, however, is that you need to understand things deeply to know when to use what tool or framework. Sure, you could try all the different frameworks with all kinds of different settings. Most of them will not work well, and if you understand the basics, you would have been able to predict that without having to spend days or weeks of computing time. Um, as I said to you before, statistics and probability is used for visualization of features that are pro, 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 um, pro, processing, uh, feature transformation, and so on. You have to know these topics for machine learning in statistics and probability, mean, median, mode, standard, variance, and like that. For multivariable calculus, you need the topics as you seen here, functions of several variables, derivatives and gradients, plotting of functions, minimum and maximum values of the functions and like that. For linear algebra, the topics uh, of vectors, matrices, uh, dot product, the uh, determinant, determinant uh, eigenvalues, eigenvectors uh, is very important for machine learning. Uh, optimization uh, methods, uh, cost function, likelihood function, error function, and some optimization methods for uh, machine learning models. And you can also see them in uh, this visual. And like that. Uh, I said to you there are some uh, other topics important for machine learning and artificial intelligence. You can see them like that. Uh, these are some visual examples. Shows the most important mathematical topics for machine learning. Uh, I can try to help you for understanding them uh, if you want to learn. And they are some visual uh, examples and some things about that and related with the uh, computer programs. Um, iterative methods, as you know, iterative methods you can use in mathematics. Uh, especially I'm using it in a fixed point theory. Uh, for using iterative methods and you can see some information like that for Newton methods and gradient methods like that and interpolation perturbations cosmetic approximation like that uh, I will also give some information with the detail in the following topics differences between the mathematics behind machine learning uh, linear algebra. I said something about it, but I will pass quickly. I just want to uh, focus on something. Uh, the, uh, we have to reply these questions. Where do I use probability in machine learning? Where do I use multivariate calculus in machine learning? And where do I use linear algebra in machine learning? Uh, as I said, you will use linear algebra for all complex processes and multivariate calculus for numerical optimizations in the machine learning. Uh, also, a uh, big mistake for the machine learning is to use same algorithm or methodology for all problems, but we have to use different one by using multivariate calculus and also linear algebra. Uh, there were some methodologies uh, created by mathematicians in 17th centuries, but uh, nowadays we cannot use them. We have to set up new ones and implement uh, them. Mm. In here, the main question is that if we consider some topics with basic 
concepts which I told about you in the beginning of the presentation, then you will solve problem. Also, uh, I will be ready to help you for preparing your infrastructures uh, related with the mathematics by using these topics um, in math. Uh, there are some um, details uh, about the linear, linear algebra for machine learning. Uh, you can read them later. Uh, now I gave a, an example uh, how can we use uh, linear algebra for machine learning. Uh, I choose it to linear equation due to my topic is pure mathematics. I can explain how can we use linear algebra in machine learning with an example on linear equation. Uh, or linear equation like you see. Uh, if we want to solve uh, x and y, uh, we can do it very easy, as you see, and we will find y is equal to 9 and x is equal to 0. Uh, the problem here is that this operation requires human intuition to work. Our machines cannot mimic and the same intuition. They can only understand data in a certain representation and rules in a set format. Now to establish an analogy with data science or machine learning, each equation represents a single observation from the data set. The left hand side represents the in independent input variables and the right hand side represents the target dependent variable. Data sets often contain hundreds and thousands of the observation. Uh, not to mention that there can be a lot of variables to work with it. So do you think we can work throughout the data sets and define optimum value of X and Y manually? Absolutely not. We would definitely prefer prefer automation for this task, and this is where linear algebra comes into play. Linear algebra is systematic representation of the knowledge that a computer can understand, and all the operation is linear algebra are systematic rules. This is the algebraic representation of the problem we solved about using the matrix operation set of rules, we can solve the values of x and y in the blink of an eye. This is the primary reason linear algebra is necessary in data science and the machine learning. Also, it plays a vital role when it comes on supervised techniques like PCA. We can give some other examples for uh, other uh, subjects in mathematics. Uh, as mentioned above, uh, for calculus, probability, uh, and so on, as follows, like partial derivatives. And they are some examples. Later, you can look at them with detail. And this is also for probability example. It gives by using bias theorem. And like that. Uh, in here, um, I said, how can you make plan for working on math? And I wrote all things for each subject. Uh, but I will say uh, just some little bit and um, basic things for you. Uh, as we know, the mathematics is the language of the universe. Uh, as I said, you we need these topics to uh, make uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, for example, in linear algebra, you have to focus on vector and matrix operation in uh, three-dimensional or two-dimensional spaces, you have to know some properties of them. 
in probability and measure theory, you have focused on real world data modeled by deterministic asymptotic laws. In multivariable calculus, plus steady differential calculus and integral calculus. And uh, in this stage, multivariable statistics, which directly covers some famous machine learning algorithms should be followed. Probability and optimization have to be combined with convex optimization. And here uh, you can see many references. Uh, I put many, many. Uh, if you want, you can use them. Uh, I hope my presentation is useful for you. Uh, maybe you can uh, have some opinion uh, about them. Uh, if you have any question, uh, I can try to reply them. And uh, at the end of my presentation, you can see my some informations as academical. Uh, like that. This is my blog, my Google Scholar, and my research gate. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me. Uh, I hope it is useful for you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Osar. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your uh, invitation. Uh, and I am very happy to be with you in here. Uh, I hope it is useful uh, for the listeners. Um, I am ready for all uh, infrastructure of mathematics for machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, you also have my uh, contact uh, information. Uh, somebody wants to um, catch me or uh, somebody wants to uh, collaboration with me, I'm ready for all. Thank you very much. All right, uh, so we do have some time to spare be before our break. So I'm going to use this time to forward some questions from our audience to you, Dr. Ozar, uh, if that's all right with you. So one of our attendees would like to know uh, how the mathematical model helps in machine learning like linear regression. So that's a question for you, Dr. Osar, from one of our audience. Um, uh, to know that uh, they have to look at uh, some um, subjects from uh, mathematics like uh, linear algebra, calculus, uh, optimization and like that. Uh, they have very, very different uh, properties and uh, will help you to prepare some different uh, models. Uh, first, you have to know what kind of uh, model you want to prepare. Uh, maybe you have to use uh, linear algebra. Maybe you have to use probability. Uh, first, you have to uh, know what kind of model you need. Then uh, you have to choose subject and from that subject you will use. OK? All right, ma'am. Uh, could you please turn on your camera, ma'am? No, okay. okay. All right, we see you now. Okay, so we have another question. Uh, okay. The question is the role of multivariate calculus in machine learning. So how does that aid the process of machine learning? Multivariate calculus. Uh, uh, especially in differential calculus is very active in machine learning. Uh, I put an example to my presentation, but the time is uh, not enough to explain everything. So uh, you can find uh, the example for that. And uh, if you look at that, uh, it will help you to understand something. OK. All right. All right, ma'am. Um, thank you so much for patiently <laughs> answering questions. Uh, yes, I'm also happy to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'm now going to. Huh. Is Sorry, there any more questions? 
Is there any more question? Uh, no, that would be all, ma'am. I am ah. now going to invite uh, Dr. Upinder Kaur with us to present you the certificate of participation. Uh, can we please have Dr. Upinder Kaur with us? Uh, very thankful to you, ma'am. Uh, uh, it is a matter of great pride to have uh, such an eminent personality among us. And uh, today I'm sharing my valuable, uh, my gratitude to present this certificate for sharing your knowledge. And uh, you have uh, successfully addressed the problem framing feature selection in machine learning. And you have also discussed some of the machine learning model like linear regression, logistic learn, uh, lesson, and you also address the uh, steps for machine learning uh, like uh, we have to uh, uh, check the data analysis part then we have to go for the model building and then we uh, select that the particular application for which we are going to uh, draw the machine learning application and it is a very knowledgeable uh, and uh, interesting session ma'am uh, so i really thankful uh, and uh, this is the certification and uh, we are presenting to you and it is a matter of great Pleasure for us. Ah, oh, thank you so much. All right, thank you, Dr. Ozan, Ozer, and thank you, Upinder, ma'am, for being with us. Uh, guys, we are now supposed to have a short break before the next session. Um, uh, we are going to take like a 10 minutes break and we're going to be back here in about 10 to 15 minutes, give or take. So we are going to continue our session with our next speaker, Dr. Hamid Kasmei. So please be back here in a little bit. We are going to see you guys again. Dr. Hamid Kasmei. Uh, Dr. Hamid Kasmei is a PhD in Applied Mathematics, Numerical Analysis, Computational Mathematics, Computer Science, and he is an active researcher in theoretical and mathematical physics. Uh, presently, Dr. Hamid is a research associate at Islamic Azad University, Iran. He has outdone himself being at the receiving end of many prestigious awards for his research and contribution to the mathematics. He has published over 40 research papers in topmost journals. Elsevier, which is one of the leading publishing house of research work in science and health, has featured some of his work. Uh, Dr. Hamid's research interests include integral equations, soft computing, artificial intelligence, mathematical physics. Uh, he has about 135 citations for his research work. Apart from that, Dr. Hamid has also been research and development manager at Hamid Electronic Jahan Company. Dr. Hamid has earned himself quite a name for his contribution to the field of mathematics. Uh, let's hear more about his work from the expert himself. Please everyone join me in welcoming Dr. Hamid Kasmei to the session. Off to you, Dr. Hamid. I am here uh, to do my best and uh, hope we have a uh, good session together. Okay. Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, my topic uh, is about machine learning trends and its application. And uh, first of all, uh, due to uh, some of the lectures and efforts uh, that uh, Professor Ozen or Ozer, uh, did about it, I will uh, tell about you about uh, some simulations, tools and software for artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. Uh, that will be based on the Becca uh, workbench for machine learning. Some of the uh, courses uh, that I'll be sharing with you later about that, about the scikit, about MATLAB, R, Python, uh, TensorFlow, and PyTorch for Python uh, that are good uh, sources in order to design any uh, machine learning uh, structure that you want to know about them or about to design about each application that you need, okay? So, and I have gathered some of the good books to study uh, by full text that I will share with you later. Some of them is about probability, statistics, and estimation. 
uh, also about MATLAB deep, mer uh, deep learning uh, with machine learning, neural networks, and artificial intelligence by Phil Kim. Uh, it, it has a very good uh, quotes. Uh, all of them have good quotes uh, that you need to learn about how to deal with machine learning algorithms, uh, and also about uh, an introduction to statistical re uh, learning with uh, application in R uh, by four uh, uh, authors, and it will be uh, available, and I will share with you later. Uh, uh, so I, I will start uh, with the main uh, ideas and the main uh, applications of uh, machine learning uh, and I and what, what are uh, them. So I want to start with neural networks. What are uh, really uh, neural networks? Neural networks uh, are inspired by inner workings of human brain. So the nodes are a sort of sort of like neurons and the, the networks uh, network is sort of like the brain itself. So you need uh, to know about the uh, neural networks, about the artificial uh, format of your uh, bra brain, uh, brain of humans. Uh, so everything uh, that is done uh, based on uh, the artificial uh, process that happens in the brain of people in biological format. So. Uh, in, in fact, a neural network is a series of algorithms that endeavors to recognize underlying re relationships in a set of data through a process that mimics the way the human brain operates. In this sense, neural networks refer, refer to the system uh, to, syst to systems of neurons or perceptrons, either organic or artificial in nature. So ne natural ne uh, neural networks can adopt to changing input so the network generates the best possible result without needing to redesign the output criteria. So uh, the main uh, uh, format of the neural networks uh, is uh, that we can uh, start with a simple format. This is single layer neural networks that represent the most simple, simple form of neural network in which there is only one layer of input nodes that set, uh, send the weighted inputs uh, to, to a subsequent, subsequent layer of receiving nodes, uh, or in some cases, one receiving node. Uh, this uh, single layer design was a, part of the fun, fun, uh, was a part of the foundation for systems which have now become much more complex. Uh, so we can see, uh, you can see later as we see in, the, uh, in this presentation. So this is the main format of a single layer uh, neural networks. You will see input layers, you will see hidden layers, and you will see output layer. So you have the input data here, and then uh, you have all the uh, all the operations about uh, the neural networks here, and then after that, uh, uh, all uh, the information uh, are connected by weights like graphs uh, to hidden layer, and uh, from then uh, you will uh, you will be directed to output layer to give your uh, results here, okay? So, uh, uh, there is uh, the, the, the procedures that happens in a singular uh, perceptron networks. So here, the input layer is the perceptrons, uh, perceptron based on the weights, uh, W1, W2, W3, W4, uh, WM uh, at M weights. And this is the summation of the bias. We have the bias format here bias function and uh, based on the weights and xi at inputs as a summation and bias function as here or we say activation function and you can see all of the information about my pre previous presentation that i will give you all of them so here the fx uh, is or activation function is fx uh, is this summation is uh, greater uh, greater than zero uh, is equal to one and uh, is, uh, if uh, is uh, gr uh, smaller than zero, is equal to zero. And then uh, you will have the y hat as output, okay? So uh, what is artificial intelligence as your definition? Artificial intelligence is the ability of a digital computer or computer controlled uh, robot to perform a task commonly associated, associated with intelligent beings, okay? The term is uh, frequently applied to, pro to the project of developing system endowed uh, with the intellectual processes characteristics of 
uh, humans such as the ability to reason, discover, meaning, generalize, or to learn from past experience. So everything that you learn, uh, you can train to a machine, a machine that you learn it, and then you can extract many results uh, by the machine learning, by the algorithm that you design, okay? So uh, based on that, the computers can be uh, programmed to carry out very complex tasks, uh, such as, for example, discover discovering proofs for mathematical theorems when playing chess, or anything that you have in your mind, okay? Uh, it, it all uh, processes in the nature, uh, in the physics, uh, and every application in science uh, can be modeled uh, and can be programmed by artificial intelligence. So, uh, why AI and ML and DP we need for artificial intelligence? So, you have various sources and uh, forms of data as a structure and unstructured, then data format. You will see here all of them. Uh, Data sources uh, are from internal uh, that you have from your desktop, from your everything, from web uh, metrics, from survey rating, from everything, uh, from your questionnaire, everything that can, can be uh, internal or external data. External data come from the social media like YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, Interest, Flickr, uh, Google Plus, as the, as the last information and everything that you will see and you will see all of them based on the uh, um, based on the application that you have here uh, for example about the, the machine generated for have G gps for tweets uh, time or tweets for updates and posting and your alerts everything that you uh, you, you have uh, for example about unstructured format of data it is about the email letters text message audio transcripts voice metrics and everything and about human generated uh, generate generation uh, uh, data uh, as on search of, uh, for example pinterest image video reviews and everything that and surveillance video like uh, for uh, video cameras uh, that you need to protect the building uh, or a par parking lot uh, for uh, exiting or uh, entering uh, cars or people to uh, or personal uh, to a uh, building uh, or uh, everything that that you need to control control it. Okay, and uh, they, there are main formulas for machine learning that you will see about naive uh, naive bias, uh, nearest neighbor, support vector machines, uh, perceptrons, neural networks, back per propagation, a gradient descent, linear regression. Uh, Principal components analysis, eigen value and eigen vector, and logistic regression, as you asked from Dr. Oz and Ozer, that will be expressed uh, here. Okay, so uh, the, also about the artificial intelligence, uh, the, we say you uh, you will say at the name such as artificial intelligence can be loosely interpreted to the mean incorpor incorporating human intelligence to, to the machines. So. Uh, some programs have attained the performance level of uh, human experts and profession, uh, professionals in performing some uh, specific tasks so that artificial intelligence in the limited sense is found uh, in many applications such as medical uh, diagnosis, computer search engines, voice recognition or handwriting recognition as you see on your uh, phone, the tablets for the uh, tablets, your computers, your PCs, uh, and uh, your tablets, everything. So you can use use it a lot uh, in your uh, many applications. Uh, so uh, whenever a machine uh, machine completes task based on the set of uh, stipulated rules uh, that solve the problems or algorithms such as intelligent behavior, that is called artificial intelligence. So such machines can move and man uh, ma manipulate objects, recognize whether someone has raised their hands or solved other problems. As you see here, you can raise your hands and it, it can be controlled by machine learning that who can ask questions and who can has, for example, some comments about my lecture, for example. So I powered machines, uh, machines are usually classified into two groups, general and narrow. The general artificial intelligence I machines can intellig intelligently solve problems like the ones mentioned above, and the narrow intelligence AI machine can perform, can perform uh, a specific test uh, very well, sometimes better than humans uh, when 
uh, so uh, they will consider as the scope that you consider. And the uh, technology used for classical uh, image and pictures, example, for example, for narrow eye, as you will see it, uh, in as a social media analysis, as Pinterest, Facebook, uh, or everything, uh, uh, everything that you can use the pictures, uh, for example, about uh, the Twitter, everything uh, you can use the pictures or about new format of the social media formats uh, that has been made in Russia, has been made in America uh, for uh, uh, processing the images. Uh, so what is machine learning definition? Machine learning algorithms uh, use statistics to find patterns in massive amounts of the data and the data here encompass encompasses a lot of things, numbers, words, emails, clicks and videos and what you have uh, and if it, it and if it can be digitally stored, it can be fed uh, into a machine learning algorithm. So machine learning is the process that powers many of the services we use today, recommendation system like those on Netflix, YouTube, and Spotify for your music, uh, search engines like Google and Maidu from China, social media feeds uh, like Facebook and Twitter, voice recognition uh, like Siri, service on Alexa from Microsoft. And the list goes on uh, as you have many applications and many services that has been introduced to the world. OK, so in all uh, all of these instances, each platform is collecting as much data about you as possible. What genres you like watching, what links uh, you are uh, clicking, what st statues you are reacting to and uh, and using machine learning to make a highly educated guess about what you might want next. So everything that you uh, share in social media, everything you click on it and everything you write as a comment, all of them can be uh, collected as a lot of, lots of data and huge data in uh, machine learning to process. OK, or in the case of a voice uh, assistant about which words match the best the funny uh, uh, songs coming out of your mouth as a main process, or uh, it's about a speech uh, recognition, or about uh, when uh, you want to write uh, uh, write a text in Microsoft uh, Word, and uh, it predicts what you want to learn after it. Okay, uh, what you want to write right after it, okay? And frankly, this process is uh, quite basic. Uh, find the pattern, apply the pattern, and uh, but it pretty much runs, uh, runs the word, and the, this, uh, it's uh, the, the, the based on the, uh, uh, based on the uh, uh, innovation invention of uh, scientist, uh, Professor, uh, Geoffrey Hinton in 1986, uh, today known as the father of the deep learning, also Alan Turing uh, force that is very important in the process of uh, new computers and now uh, we uh, own them due to ma making super power computers, okay? And uh, what is, uh, and we have uh, as the, uh, about the machine learning, as the name suggests, machine learning can be loosely interpreted to mean empowering computer center which the ability to learn and the invention intention of ML is to enable machines to learn by themselves using provided data and make accurate predictions. So ML or machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. In fact, it's simply a technique for realizing artificial intelligence or AI in abbreviation. Also, it is, um, it is a method of training algorithms such that they can learn how to make decisions, okay? Training in machine learning entails giving a lot of data to the algorithm and allowing it to learn more about the process information. And uh, uh, what is the deep learning? Deep learning is a machine learning algorithm uh, that uses a technique uh, at which gives machines an enhanced ability to find and amplify them. Even the smallest patterns, this technique is called a deep neural network or we say is in, uh, in abbreviation DNS. Deep, uh, it, it is called deep because it has many, many layers or simple computational nodes uh, that work work together uh, to munch through data and deliver a final result in the form of the prediction. So it's, it, is, it is very useful for predictions and predictive analysis, okay? So difference between machine learning and deep learning here, uh, for machine learning and deep learning, you will see you have 
input here and feature extraction, classification and output. We, the, the, they will see you there is car or not car or for uh, deep learning, you have both of them here about feature extraction plus classification for deep learning uh, from input to output that is there is car or not car, okay? So we will explain all of them here and differences uh, between machine learning and artificial intelligence AI, AI vs machine learning vs uh, deep learning uh, vs uh, or versus uh, deep learning differences. Here is an image that attempts to visualize the distinction distinction between them. Uh, uh, deep learning is a subset of machine learning. And machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. And you will see here the difference heat. Uh, here, uh, artificial intelligence is the broad uh, grouping of techniques enabling machines to mimic uh, aspects of human intelligence uh, programs use if, if then rules, decision trees, logic and machine learning, uh, including deep learning to predict reason, adopt and uh, many other actions. OK, and for machine learning, agrees that improve on tasks through experiences and have the ability to learn without uh, continuous programming okay and about the deep learning and machine learning uh, subset uh, that uses uh, multi-layered uh, neural networks to learn from large amount of the data you will see all of them uh, so dp is a subset of ml and ml is a subset of uh, i okay and uh, what this picture says to us, uh, it says I means getting a computer to mimic human be uh, behavior in some way. And machine learning is a subset of I and it consists of the techniques that enable computers to figure uh, things out from the data and the deliver AI application. OK, then deep learning meanwhile is a subset of machine learning that enables computers to solve more complex problems. OK, and uh, what is feature extraction and selection? Uh, so, uh, uh, based on something that Dr. Ozan uh, talked about them, we need to know about curse of dim dimensionality and uh, we need the re re reduction uh, of dimensionality that I have explained all of them in the pre previous section. So, here I will try to uh, uh, explain them very, very simpler format that what we want about the ex uh, feature extraction and feature selection. So uh, feature extraction is getting useful features from the existing data. As you will see here, you will find everything that you need from the notes uh, that you that you, it will be conveyed from the input to the output. And you need uh, the useful features from all of them, but you don't omit uh, uh, any of them. So just select all of them, OK? But about uh, the selection, it's completely vice versa. Choosing a subset of the original pool of the features. So just you need to uh, find to select some of them and omit some of them and just uh, some of them are needed for you in order to uh, train your machine learning algorithm. OK, uh, so uh, what we need to know is fe uh, feature extraction is quite complex. Uh, concept concerning the translation uh, of raw data into inputs that a uh, particular machine learning algorithm requires. And the model is a motor, uh, but it needs fuel to work. Features must represent the information of the data in a format that will uh, best fit the needs of the algorithm that is going to be used to solve the problem. And uh, 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 you need to know about them. Uh, just we need you need uh, to know more of them very uh, quickly. Uh, feature extraction fills this requirement. It builds uh, valuable information from raw data, the features by reformatting, uh, combining, tr transforming primary features into new ones until it yields a new set of data that can be consumed by the machine learning models to achieve their goals. OK, and the feature selection for each part is a clearer task given a set of potential features. Select some of them and discard the rest, as we said to you. Uh, feature selection is, is applied either to prevent uh, redundancy uh, or uh, and or uh, irrelevancy irre 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 existing in the fe features or just to get a limited number of the features to prevent from 
uh, overfitting, okay? And the feature extraction is for creating a new similar uh, and a smaller set of features that still captures the most of the useful information. Again, the feature selection keeps the subset of original features while feature extraction cre create new ones. It's the comparison. As with feature ex ex selection, some algorithms already have uh, built in uh, feature uh, extraction. Uh, the best example is deep learning, uh, which extracts extracts increase, increasingly useful representation representations of the uh, raw input data through each hidden uh, neural layer. So in this layer, you, uh, you will have lots of information that can be processed based on the both uh, formats that we described. Okay. And the uh, note, uh, you need to know about some of them, uh, uh, some constants. This is very important, informant, uh, uh, very important. Note that if features are equally re relevant, we could uh, perform PCA technique to reduce the dimensionality, as I told you at first, and eliminate redundancy. It uh, that it was the case here. We would be doing feature extraction as we were transforming the primary features and not just selecting a subset of the data. So PCA, uh, that is means uh, principal component analysis, is an uh, unsupervised algorithm that creates linear com combinations of the original features. The new features are orthogonal, uh, which means that they are uncorrelated, uh, they are not coercive, okay? Uh, furthermore, they are ranked in order of the explained variance uh, uh, the first principle, uh, the first uh, principal component PC1 explain the most variance in your data set, and the PC2 explain the second most variance, and so on. And for for more information, you can visit the link that I will share with you. And uh, there is another concept that I, that I have uh, they have written in my uh, previous. Uh, presentation. Uh, no, we don't have time, but I will share with you for further study. And uh, what are the labels and data? This is very important if you want to know about the supervised and unsupervised data. Uh, labels uh, can be done by human action, okay? And uh, most of the time it's uh, wasting uh, the time uh, by human action, and uh, it's better that all the processes. Uh, uh, will be done uh, should and uh, uh, can be done uh, automatically and is better uh, than labeling the data but labels can be obtained by asking human to make judgments about a given piece of unlabeled data for example does this photos contain a horse or a cow uh, to recognition uh, to have a recognition and are significant uh, significantly more expensive to obtain than the raw uh, 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 unlabeled data. So you need uh, to know all of them about the quality of the matter. It's expensive or cheap. It's horse or a cow uh, for images. After obtaining or uh, labeled the data set, machine learning models uh, can be applied to the data so that new uh, unlabeled data can be presented to the model and likely label can be uh, uh, guessed or predict, predicted for the for that piece of unlabeled data. So you can decide based on the labeled data uh, on your machine learning algorithms, okay? And the regression and classification uh, problems that you need to know is classification problems that is very important. Uh, uh, ask the algorithm to predict the discrete uh, value identifying the input data as the member of the particular uh, particular class or group in a training data set of animal images that would mean each photo was pre-labeled as, as a cat, koala, or for example a turtle. The algorithm is then evaluated by how accurately it can be uh, correctly classify new images of the other koalas or the turtles. So you can classify the images here. One of them, uh, one of the applications for is image classification. On the other hand, regression problems look at continuous data versus the here that you can work on discrete data. Okay, and uh, one use cases is linear regression. Should uh, sound familiar from algebra class? Uh, and the question is: Given a particular x value, what's the expected value of y variable based on the fun function? 
that you have and based on based on set data set points that you consider from uh, from a, uh, for example a curve and you need to uh, anticipate what function uh, can passes from these uh, data points based based on the x and y okay so a uh, more radius rea realistic machine learning example is uh, one involving lots of the variables like an algorithm that predicts the price of an uh, apartment in san francisco based on the square footage location and proximity to public transport transport so uh, all of these algorithms, for example, can be used for Uber or many uh, taxi request applications or for Google Map, for, uh, for example, for uh, everything that is based on your anticipation, okay? Uh, so we will go uh, into uh, uh, five uh, AI and machine learning trends to impact businesses in 2020. Uh, so uh, we, you will have all of them here. So I will uh, go further. Uh, trend one is I is helping combat uh, COVID-19 that uh, was uh, uh, caused uh, and happened in 2019. A World uh, uh, Health uh, Organization WHO report from February two, uh, 2020 revealed AI and big data are playing an important role in helping healthcare professionals respond uh, to coronavirus uh, COVID-19 outbreak in China. So how is AI and machine learning helping combat, uh, combat uh, COVID-19? There are many applications including thermal cameras and similar techniques are being used to read uh, temperatures before individuals enter busy places like public transport system, government buildings and other important areas. And in Singapore, one hospital is leveraging uh, care technology um, to provide on-the-go temperature checks using smartphones and thermal uh, sensors. And uh, we are developing a, and a, a paper that has that is not pub published and is under review about uh, the, the 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 about uh, the new format of the. Um, uh, during uh, COVID-19 based on the image uh, classification and image processing based on the machine learning and the uh, versus uh, PCR algorithm that, uh, that is uh, broadly used in uh, uh, for many hospitals uh, and many uh, health organization centers now. And uh, also, Chinese tech company Baidu created an AI system that uses infrared uh, technology to predict the passengers' temperatures at Beijing's uh, Quinch railway station. And robots are being uh, deployed uh, to implement uh, con uh, contactless delivery for uh, uh, isolated individuals, helping medical staff ensure that uh, the care areas stay in disinfected and safe for use. Okay. And many the diagnosis algorithms have been developed as our, uh, our uh, book chapter that is on the process and our uh, paper around the world, along with uh, creating vac vaccines in many institutes, around 150 institutes in the world are wor working actively, actively in the world based on some uh, previous webinars that we checked and uh, research centers and it was be uh, it will be expected that AI can be one of uh, factors that specifies and detects many behaviors of COVID-19 in the future, okay? And uh, e-commerce giant Alibaba created uh, this uh, the Strikebird uh, natural language processing model, uh, NLP, uh, to help uh, uh, combat uh, COVID-19. This platform provides Healthcare data analysis using the company's existing platforms and search engines cap cap capabilities, which proved uh, instrumental in expediting uh, expediting uh, the country's uh, ability to uh, disseminate uh, medical records. Solutions uh, like this uh, provides a proactive uh, approach to treat detection, which can limit the, sp the spread of or outbreak of infectious diseases like COVID-19 and uh, when it comes to sim something as uh, contagious as COVID-19, a proactive approach isn't just important, it's essential. So uh, now we have the Corona Plus uh, format of the COVID-19, a new format uh, that uh, came from the SARS uh, 
But corona plus, plus do, doesn't have any uh, any kind of signs and symptoms symptoms you know, and uh, the scientists are trying uh, to work on it by eye to diagnose uh, what uh, they can find uh, some uh, some rare uh, symptoms in order to uh, cure uh, this sickness or to find vaccines uh, in order to uh, pre predict. Uh, uh, prevent uh, many people in order to uh, affect it to this uh, sickness, okay? And about the train to ML uh, framework competition, uh, here we have uh, TensorFlow uh, 2 and we have PyTorch uh, 2 uh, and the Cross uh, 3 platforms uh, that is used for machine learning. So uh, all of them that is very important uh, application in uh, de de designing your machine learning platforms. So all of them are uh, are in rival together. So PyTorch has uh, com comparable speed to TensorFlow, which makes it te technologically superior. superior. Uh, also, still TensorFlow is uh, compatible compatible with more business solutions. Uh, uh, through so much businesses have not made the switch yet. Uh, while PyTorch is no uh, the, the common framework used for research businesses are still using TensorFlow well into to, to 2020, but um, some of them have uh, many uh, packages that you need uh, to use uh, for your computer, uh, uh, for your laptop, uh, and uh, it, all of them can be used for uh, AI research. Okay. Uh, uh, also, TensorFlow took right with cross integrated uh, and uh, eager uh, execution default mode, and PyTorch eventually overtook the TensorFlow as the framework of choice for AI research, as I told you. And uh, trend, the tree is AI analysis for business forecast. Uh, ML, uh, ML based time series analysis is a hot AI trend in 2020. This technique collectively analyzes the series of data over the time. Uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, the like time series uh, forecast analysis for many uh, predictions like for weather, like for earthquake, everything. So uh, when used correctly, uh, it aggregate, aggregate, uh, aggregates data and analyzes it in such a way that allows managers to uh, easily make decisions based on their data. For, uh, for example, for earthquakes, for uh, weather uh, prediction, everything, and for uh, make decision by managers based on some data that they have uh, from before, uh, from earlier decisions or from earlier data, uh, from formerly data that they have gathered. Using an ML network to process the uh, complex calculations required to apply a statistical, a statistical model to your business's structured data, this is a major uh, improvement of our traditional methods. So this ML uh, boosted analysis offer high uh, accuracy forecasts that are 90 to 95% accurate. Uh, that is very good for us. Uh, when the AI network you are using is properly trained, it can capture features of your businesses such as uh, seasonality and cross correlation in demand forecasting for retail. For example, when you want to uh, uh, sell your uh, for example, your signs, uh, your clothes, uh, everything that you want uh, to, for example, uh, you you sell uh, to to buy for people uh, uh, in uh, social media for Amazon for uh, every uh, online marketing. Uh, it it will be very very important. Uh, uh, I uh, has uh, many applications for this kind of uh, technology for retail, uh, especially. Uh, and uh, in 2020, we will see a growing trend uh, for applying recurrent neural networks that are tell you about it, but it's it uh, for time series analysis and forecasting recurrent neural network while are uh, an application of deep learning are one reason. We believe that deep learning will end up replacing traditional machine learning formats. For example, deep learning can forecast the data such as future exchange rate rates for currency with a surprisingly high degree degree of accuracy as I told you about 90 to 95 percent. The research into time series classification uh, that is very good for uh, earthquake and for uh, forecast uh, uh, 
uh, description and prediction has made substantial progress in the recent years. The problem being solved is complex, offering both high dimensionality and large numbers. So far, no industrial applications have been achieved. However, this is set to change as the research into this field has produced many promising results and many, many applications and many, many, many research are uh, working uh, on them on many uh, in many universities and many industries to make new applications and new uh, uh, things that you need to know. And about uh, trend three, you, you will have another type of artificial intelligence that has been recently uh, developed is the convolutional neural network that we will tell you that at la last of format of a lecture, this type of ML network discovers and extracts internal a structure that is required to generate input data for time series analysis and uh, along with the forecasting the future there is another technology that could be widely applied an uh, anomaly detection based on the autoencoders that uh, run artificial neural networks using unsupervised learning algorithms that you will see later these systems are capable of capturing common pattern while ignoring the noise encoded feature vectors allow businesses to separate anomalies such as financial, political, and even social data. So for everything you will see, you will find, uh, for example, uh, the right infor information for financial, for political, and the for social data, and based on the category that you need, and it's, it's, and it's uh, all of them based on your favorite and something that you click on, it, on them, some, something that you need, or something that you categorize based on the machine learning, algorithm that is hidden based on the algorithm, based on the social media like YouTube, like Twitter, everything that you need or uh, like uh, online newspapers, uh, you can find uh, the category of data and uh, then uh, you can get uh, the favorite information that you really uh, require them, okay? And uh, about the trend for uh, is about re reinforce reinforcement learning uh, that is leading to something uh, big in 2020. Uh, in abbreviation, is RL is a specialized application of deep learning that uses its own experience to improve itself and is effective to the point that it may be the future of AI. When it comes to re uh, it comes to reinforcement learning AI, the algorithm learns by doing. Uh, like, for example, something that you learn to your brain, for example, about the disab disabled people, when you cannot uh, walk very well, so when you, uh, when a nurse tells them, okay, try uh, to, for example, uh, try to uh, uh, move your feet or move your hand if they are disabled, is a kind of learning or training data. So algorithm learns by doing something that is the, the, the this is the completely the main application that happens on, on your brain uh, when uh, you have uh, God forbid some of the uh, disabilities. Okay, initially actions are tried and random, but eventually this becomes a logical process at its attempts to attain a specific uh, a specific goals. The operator rewards or punishes these actions and the results are fed back uh, into uh, the network to teach the AI, okay? You will teach uh, a process and then it will be goes further automatically and you, it will be done by doing something, okay? No predefined suggestions are given to the reinforcement learning agent. Instead, the AI starts out uh, uh, set out by action by acting completely randomly and eventually learns how to maximize its rewards through the repetition uh, or iteration. Okay, uh, please repeat it or iterate it, and then it, you will give the reward. Reward. Reinforcement learning allows the algorithm to develop sophisticated and complex strategies. Okay. And a reinforcement analytic is the best way to simulate the human creativity in a machine by running many possible scenarios can even by, uh, be adopted by uh, to a complete complex behavioral task. It's an ideal solution for solving all kinds of opti optimization problems that Dr. Other uh, talked about them. Uh, uh, Self-improving uh, uh, chatbots are an example of reinforcement learning's effect. 
A global oriented chatbot is one that is designed to help a user solve a specific problem, such as making an appointment or booking a ticket to an event. You can see uh, chatbots a lot in a Telegram Messenger or uh, Hike Messenger in India. If you have Hike Messenger or Telegram, uh, you will have a bot that you can uh, you can get lots of information. For example, for example about that or you can, uh, for example, uh, order some of the music that you want or order some of the applications or uh, programs, app uh, applications that you need based on something that you order based on the chatbots and the, the, that and it, the, the application gives to you. Uh, a chatbot can be trained using reinforcement learning the true trial and error to become a fully functional automated assistant to customers, so it can be completely uh, um, for example, accomplished and uh, it, it can be completed uh, for the future based on the sum of the testimonials from the uh, users. Uh, it can be completely uh, intelligent to solve a, a problem or to be done uh, all the processes that you need based on the your order as a chatbot. Okay. And uh, the trend five is the AI driving biometric security solutions. The significant ad uh, advancement have been made in biometric verification. Bio ID is no longer something that you expect to see in sci fi films. Uh, so it is reused in Sweden, uh, Sweden that we will uh, we'll see here. The, the, this emerging ML uh, trends is one to keep your an eye. Uh, this is very important. Uh, for example, people in Sweden or Norway know uh, from uh, when, when they are born uh, have uh, some bio ID on their hands and uh, it's, it's all the information that every people that has on their hands, uh, on their wrist, uh, for example, uh, from the birth uh, time till the death time uh, and it can be used for many, uh, many things like many cars, uh, for example, application cards for financial cards, for uh, identification, ID, uh, ID cards, everything. So, MR's efficient approach to gathering, processing, and analyzing large data sets can improve the per performance of your biometric system. Running uh, an efficient biometric system is all about performing matching tasks quickly and accurately, and the, this is a task about ML network uh, excellent, uh, accelerated. And for example, uh, the reliability of AI based on biometric se se security is also increasing. Here's an example, the deep learning based face uh, anti spoofing system allows you to secure on any face recognition solution from any attempt to imitate a real face that uh, he, he, this uh, technology is used in many, uh, for example, uh, boundaries uh, in guards, uh, or in air, in airports when you want to, to go to another country to abroad and the, all of uh, the police uh, centers uh, can make a picture from your face uh, and check by this application that is uh, is, is your real ma uh, face or 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 it has it has been manipulated so uh, and uh, I also we talk, talk about the current idea on born children in Sweden too uh, or about your eyes, and uh, it can be uh, many information uh, saved and uh, many information processed from your eyes uh, based on the biometric uh, security solutions too. And uh, also another example of biometric application is Amazon's Alexa, which is now able to tell who is speaking by comparing the speaker to a predetermined, predetermined a voice profile, no extra hardware is necessary to help a properly train neural network to accurately uh, identify the speaker. So it, uh, this technology made by Microsoft. In 2020, we predict that various biometrics algorithms and applications will be combined with machine learning to create a comprehensive security solutions. Multimodal uh, biometric recognition is within our reach thanks to advancement in AI technology. You will find it. And trend six is automated machine learning. AutoML is adopted to execute tedious and boring uh, modeling uh, tasks uh, that once requires weeks or months or of work by professional data scientists. 
Uh, AutoML runs uh, synth systematic uh, and regularized regularize processes on the raw input data to choose the model that makes the most, uh, it will be make sense. Uh, uh, AutoML's auto job is to find a pattern in the output data and decide what model is best applied to, to, to design. To decide about it, uh, uh, previously these activities were processed by hand that not manual, uh, that, uh, that was not uh, completely op uh, uh, optimized, but uh, this process will be optimized by ML, okay? So AutoML applies several uh, different machine learning techniques uh, like Google's AutoML, a combination of recurrent neural network RNS and reinforcement learning, excuse me. Hello, dear professor. AutoML applies uh, several different machine learning techniques. Google AutoML, uh, a combination of uh, a combination of recurrent neural networks and reinforcement learning is one example. Uh, after extensive uh, repetition, a high degree of accuracy can be achieved automatically based on the machine learning algorithms. Uh, so here uh, there are some of the uh, probability, probability algorithms that you use uh, for uh, prediction and uh, to reach a best response to it. So it, it needs to be said that about uh, about the details of uh, what is auto automated machine learning. Yes. OK, so uh, even major major cloud computing services offer a type of AutoML, Google uh, AutoML and Azure for Microsoft AutoML machine learning are two popular examples. Other options include the open source Autocross, Teapot and AutoGloom. Uh, ML, uh, ML uh, or MLAS uh, platform, uh, the, the best choice for your business will uh, depend on your business goals and budget. So, auto, uh, so uh, this question is, uh, is ultimately effective? The answer in practice is often yes. For example, Lenovo was able to use data robot by uh, Amazon Web Services to reduce the model creation time for their demand forecast from T or from three or four weeks to three days. So uh, it uh, uh, it uh, ameliorates and in, it increases uh, the time of process. Okay, representing an impressive uh, sevenfold improvement. Model uh, uh, production time was lowered by an even larger factor, all the way from two days to five minutes. Okay, so the time will be go uh, will be go uh, shorter and shorter. Okay. Uh, the pre uh, prediction accuracy of these models also have been increased. Okay, uh, so the trend, the seven is explaining AI uh, is based on the uh, European uh, Union standard. Uh, is an, a type of AI technology that has been designed to fit this uh, criteria. Uh, it's about uh, uh, make to make uh, artificial intelligence more transparent uh, to consumer and users. And uh, unlike regular uh, regular uh, black box machine learning technique, uh, it's often impossible to explain how the AI came to a certain conclusion. Explaining AI is designed. So, uh, how what we can what we want to say? Explaining AI is designed to simplify uh, to simplify and visual visualize how ML networks make decisions. So, what does black black box mean? In traditional AI model, the network is designed to produce either a numerical or binary output. For example, a machine learning model designed to decide whether uh, to offer credit in a specific situation will output either yes or no, or no additional with no additional uh, ex explanation. So, the output with explanation AI will include the reasoning behind any decision made by the network. For example, uh, the AI tells you why happened uh, this action. Why, for example, you have uh, the, the user has choose this option. For example, for the example, what, what, and this is which is you using our example allows the network to provide the reason for approving or denying a credit request or about, for example, about uh, buying uh, clothes or not buying. So it, it can be it can be gathered by a dem demographical statistics of people uh, and it can, it can be analyzed by explainable uh, AI, okay? Uh, and we have here, for example, a credit approval, uh, what is your age, what is your salary, and what is your unpaid bills, 
and some of uh, some of the time uh, th there is no output. Some of the time you have output here, and uh, again uh, the businesses are starting uh, is starting to rely on various uh, various trending machine uh, learning algorithms to make decisions. According to Gartner, around 30 percent of large enterprise and corporation contracts are uh, likely to require this situation by 2025. 20, uh, Explaining why is necessary if companies require proper uh, accountability during these processes. One example of this future trend in AI is local in interpretable uh, model agnostic ex uh, explanation that is line in uh, brief. Uh, this Python library explains the predictions of any classifier by learning a special human readable model around the predictions with line. And, and other texts, even non-experts in, in this field are able to find any, to find and improve inaccurate models. This is still a very, very new field uh, with plenty of room for uh, improvement. Okay, uh, it has open windows. Uh, uh, trend AI is com conversational AI. It's uh, uh, so uh, researchers at open AI claim that uh, the AI based text generator is able to generate realistic uh, stories, poems, and articles. Uh, so, uh, artificial intelligence also has developed to, to, a, to a point where it can know complete with the human brain with, when it comes to everyday tasks such as writing, as I told you about the Microsoft, okay? By, the, by the, uh, Microsoft uh, text, Microsoft text, okay? Uh, by directional uh, encoder representation from transformers or BERT is another significant outcome in AI field. This is another text AI that is that is designed to pre-train uh, pre models using given text. The major uh, advancement, how BERT processes text, it will be used. So uh, BERT brings a language model uh, from na natural language processing that. Uh, allows for bidirectional training. Uh, BERT has a deeper understanding of language uh, than any network that came before it and uses several types of preceding pre uh, uh, architecture like about deep learning to generate accurate prediction for text, like most of word text prediction from natural language processing. Okay, it is, uh, so you, you have here, Another uh, format is XLNet uh, is uh, uh, another platform is an auto regressive uh, pre-training model that's able to predict words from a set of text using time context clues, despite being only a simple uh, feed forward algorithm that it is a kind of uh, feed, feed forward and feedback algorithm that, that uh, this some parts of artificial neural networks ANS that uh, it has managed to uh, outperform BERT in many uh, natural processes, uh, natural language processing tasks uh, that you have it. Uh, and uh, or uh, one clear application is voice enable AI, voice acti activation and voice uh, comments, all function uh, on the basis of computer understanding of voice to text trans uh, transcript of the spoken comment from speech to recognition. Uh, to text, uh, the better computer can understand the text and the major accuracy it can pr perform spoken comments as well. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we will, it's, we, it will be uh, expected that our uh, 110 million visual assistant users in the USA alone, uh, for it, there is a massive market for improving voice recognition. And today, voice enabled these devices, such as Amazon Echo and Google Home, are common in homes. And uh, it will be expected more uh, market for that. And about uh, the three nine is generate generative uh, adversarial net, uh, networks or GANs that uh, they were uh, presented to the world of uh, OI and ML and DP in 2016. Uh, and generative neural adversarial networks are a way to generate new data using existing data in a, such a way that new product resembles the original. This may not this may not seem too impressive at first. After copying easy, right? Well, not quite. So by generating similar but non-identical -ident data, GANs are able to produce amazing data such as synthetic photos of human face that are in this is in this is in this 
uh, indistinguishable from the real uh, real humans since being invented by young Goodflow uh, as a father of uh, Gans in 2014, uh, Gans have achieved a significant progress in the field of sy synthetic phase generation and it, it will be promoted to the world in the conference in 2016. And uh, uh, it can uh, do it, for example, uh, like this. A fake phase generator was developed by NVIDIA. It, it, it's known uh, as this person does it, does not exist and has gained some traditional online. And other examples are facial processing apps or applications that can produce age or gender swap versions of existing, fo existing photo. So you can uh, uh, expect many of uh, information uh, from uh, GANs in, in output. So again, is an ML network that is trained using two network, network models, a generator model, and a discriminator model. One of these models, the generator is responsible uh, for creating new data samples. The discriminator's job in, in, in versus is to decide whether the generated data is distinguishable from the real data samples or not. During tra training, the two models are competing against each other. Yes, it's very important. They are uh, acting versus each, other, versus each other with the generator trying to fool the discriminator, okay, to defeat the discriminator. And uh, about uh, a property, a use GAN is able to generate new images from only the description. Uh, soon enough, this network will be used for applications such as police sketches. Aside from generating new images, the discriminator of a GAN is a good way to de detect anomalies and the holes plenty of application in quality control and other inspection based uh, networks or network uh, works or about surveillance networks that is very uh, applications that it can use based on uh, GANs models, okay? Uh, and the trend five is about con convergence of IoT and AI. And uh, uh, we have, uh, 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 industrial IoT processes that are generally uh, not as efficient as they could be. This leaves plenty of room for AI algorithms to help increase e efficiency and reduce data, uh, reduce down, uh, downtime for various businesses through methods such as predictive maintenance uh, or defeat, uh, de detection. Overall, the addition of AI to a manufacturing process can only increase the, its efficiency so the IoT, uh, the blockchain, the artificial intelligence, all of them can be uh, converged together. Uh, it, uh, it's very important uh, for that. Uh, okay, so uh, the current IoT uh, trends reveal that the businesses are accepting uh, the potential of machine learning. Rolls-Royce partnered with Azure IT from Microsoft Solutions uh, to use the cloud and IoT devices uh, to their advantage, the power of the predictive maintenance shouldn't be uh, under, uh, underestimated, and Rolls-Royce is taking advantage of their IoT devices to check health of their aircraft engines to keep the, the uptime at a maximum. So that they are really important for uh, 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 airport uh, uh, transformation, okay? And uh, we have another company that uh, is, has jumped to, uh, to IoT AI uh, is bandwagon is Hershey in Hershey production facilities. Even uh, just one person variance in weight can cost a lot. Using most of Azure machine learning network, Hershey was able to significantly reduce the vari vari uh, variability of uh, their product weight, resulting in major uh, savings. Uh, one important machine learning option to improve the IoT software development process is knowledge distillation, okay? And you, you will see knowledge distillation here. Uh, so you have a teacher and a student, uh, you have pre-trained data, uh, and the, here the data is to be trained, and you, you have the data that needs to be trained, soft labels, predictions, uh, and uh, you, you will have the three label on data, and uh, this is called the distilled this, this knowledge, uh, all in all, okay? And uh, we have uh, lots of information about them. 
so as an example of knowledge dissemination is video surveillance system that needs to detect uh, genders of people on camera in real time detecting a person gender takes a large neural network which is the best run on the cloud however for real time detection you can't always rely on the cloud and uh, also ml networks learns how to produce desired results through the thickness such as reinforcements Learn, uh, learning uh, then a small ml network is trained to produce identical results to a large ml network and the point uh, of knowledge decision is model compression this uh, smaller network uh, ml network is easier to run uh, uh, less than uh, powerful devices such as iot sensors and other mobile devices okay and uh, this is this is knowledge that you have about the cameras and the future AI is a lot that you will see later. And what is supervised in machine learning uh, comes in three favors. Uh, so supervised, uh, unsupervised and reinforcement learning is supervised learning. The most prevalent, the data is labeled to tell the machine uh, exactly what patterns it should look for. Think of uh, uh, as uh, something like a sniffer dog that will uh, hunt down targets once it knows uh, this the scent it's after okay that's what you are doing when you press play uh, on a netflix show you are telling the algorithm to find similar shows like youtube that you search on something okay supervised learning and the, in the, the supervised learning machine the algorithm learns from the label data based on something that you tell uh, or you uh, order as in the, the uh, label information okay and uh, what is uh, supervisory? We think of supervised learning with the concept of functional uh, function approximation, uh, where basically we train an algorithm uh, in and in the, in the end of the process, we pick the function that the best describes the input data, the one that uh, for a given x makes the best estimation of y, and x is, uh, x is bigger than y. Okay. Uh, and the most of the time we are not able to figure out the true function that always makes the correct prediction and other reason is that the algorithm rely upon an assumption made by humans about how the computer should learn and this assumption introduced a bias so that is the, that's why we can use the labeling the data okay and what is and we have all of the things about the uh, the supervised try to model relationships and dependencies uh, between the target prediction output and input features such such that we can predict the output values for new data based on these those relationships which it can which it should learn from the previous data sets. Okay, and application of supervised learning is a predictive model uh, labeled based on the label data prediction based on label data. Main types of uh, supervised learning problems include regression and classification problems that we described about it. Nearest neighbors in analyzing the scattered data uh, in Cayenne, naive bias classification algorithms based on bias theorem and probability courses, uh, decision trees in graph algorithms, linear regression in statistics, support vector machines, uh, machines or SVM to analyze data for classification and regression in order to train data, and about the neural networks. So, application of supervisors is about the label data classification and regression. Okay. And what is unsupervised learning? Uh, learning uh, 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 it's uh, in, uh, in, uh, in unsupervised learning, the data has no labels. The machine learning just looks for, for, for whatever patterns it can find. This is like letting uh, uh, small, uh, the dog smell tones of different objects and sorting them into groups with smaller smells. Unsupervised techniques that aren't as popular because they have less obvious applications. Uh, uh, in, uh, interestingly, they have gained uh, traction in uh, cybersecurity. And uh, uh, so uh, they are uh, the family of machine learning algorithms which are mainly used in pattern detection and descriptive modeling. However, there are no output categories or labels uh, here based on which the algorithm can try to model relationships. And uh, you can see unsupervised learning model automatically uh, that can extract features and find uh, patterns in the uh, in the data. And uh, you will see it can be used for biology, for cancer detection, for sonography, everything, uh, and for uh, image processing and in uh, any uh, any biomedical application and many many uh, kind of uh, 
part of the physics and image processing, everything that you need, okay? And uh, application of supervised is about the scripting models, main types of unsupervised learning algorithms include clustering algorithms, association rule uh, learning algorithms, and comments cluster clustering association rules, and the reinforcement learning learns by trial and error to achieve a clear object. It tries out lots of different things and is rewarded and penalized. They depend on whether its behaviors help or hinder it uh, from reaching its objective. This is uh, this is like giving and uh, withholding treat, uh, treats uh, when uh, teaching a dog or new trick. Okay, reinforcement learning or 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 reinforcement uh, reinforcement learning is based on Google's AlphaGo, the pro and the uh, method of the version uh, gathering from the interaction with the uh, environment to take action that would maximize the reward and minimize the risk. And it, it called, uh, called uh, the agent continuously learns from the environment in the in an iterative fashion. In the process, the agent learns from its experiences of the environment from previous experience uh, it, uh, until it explores the full range of possible states. OK, and this is a type of machine learning and therefore also a branch of artificial intelligence and all those machines and software agent to automatically determine the ideal behavior with the class uh, with a specific Contest in order to maximize its performance. Okay, and uh, this is uh, the format. Uh, and what is reinforcement learning that we have seen? Uh, seen we have to told about them. It has many applications. Like for example, uh, one of uh, when the step is uh, repeated uh, for learning an algorithm, the problem is known as a Markov Markov decision process. In order to produce intelligent programs, also called the agent, the reinforcement learning goes through the following steps. Uh, input data is observed by the ag agent decision making functions is used to make the agent perform an action after the action is performed the agent receives the reward or re reinforcement from the environment the state action pair infor uh, information about the reward is stored and uh, what is a uh, ab common algorithm about the reinforcement learning or are about q learning temporal difference td and the deep, the deep uh, adversarial networks, DANs, and use cases in some application of uh, R, RLs algorithms uh, are computer played board games, chess or go, robotic hands, and self driving cars like BMW and Mercedes Benz that you will see. And uh, we have convolutional neural networks uh, that is a deep learning algorithm which can take in, uh, in an output image that is used in image classification, assign importance, learning. Uh, learnable uh, ways and biases to various aspects and objects in the image and be able to differentiate uh, to differentiate one from uh, other image the pre-processing required in uh, convolutional networks is much lower as compared to other classification algorithms the architecture of convolutional networks is analogous to that of connectivity pattern of neurons in the human brain and was inspired by organization of visual cortex Individual neurons respond uh, to stimuli uh, or a si simulation only in a, a restricted, restricted region of the visual field known as uh, receptive field from the brain. A collection of such fields overlap the cover entire visual area, and you will see here the full format. For example, the, we have the uh, the guess number here as input, and you will see. Uh, the output that wants to guess the number from 0 to 9, okay, based on these uh, hidden layers here. And the application of uh, convolutional neural networks is about decoding facial recognition, analyzing documents, historic and environmental uh, collections, understanding climate, gray areas, better image resolution about what human being uh, sees and what it can be better see that, and about the online advertising and about the brain, uh, brain medical engineering, brain cancer detection, and many issues in healthcare like tomography, sonography, everything. Uh, and the uh, MRI and the, the recurrent neural networks are as a type of artificial neural network commonly used in speech recognition and neural uh, and natural uh, language processing. Uh, RNS, as I told you uh, before, designed to recognize the data secretional characteristics and use pattern to predict the next slide scenarios. And they convert in the independent activation into dependent activation by providing the same base and biases to all the layers, thus reducing the 
complexity of increasing parameters and memorizing each previous output by giving each output to an, as an input. So the information from each out output goes to it to new input uh, to the next hidden to the next hidden layer. Okay, and the process is done again. Uh, so uh, you will see here the uh, many applications for recurrent neural networks. Uh, so you will see here uh, full, full information about them, the leaks from uh, Mr. Vinay Sharma about that, and applications of uh, neural networks. And you will see based on the feed the loop feedback, roll and unroll, and uh, the applications are predictive problems, language uh, modeling, and generating text, machine translation, speech recognition, gener generating uh, image uh, description, video tagging. Uh, uh, and video labeling, uh, text uh, like YouTube, uh, text summarization, call center analysis, face detection, OCR applications in uh, scanners and as image recognition, and other applications like music composition. So you will see all applications and uh, all at all. I want to welcome to all of you uh, in order uh, to uh, uh, finish uh, uh, in order to uh, attending in this uh, webinar. Thank you so much. It's finished. Okay, I am uh, here uh, all uh, to talk to you. It's finished. Thank you so much right. for attending. Right. Okay, yes. Thank you so much okay. uh, for attending this webinar. If uh, there is any questions, uh, uh, I will uh, here to answer and or uh, go to uh, next session for Professor Marcha. Okay, please tell me. If there is a question, uh, madam. Okay. Okay, we, we are okay, going we to wrapping up this session, doctor. And um, I'm going to invite Dr. Upinder Kaur over here to present the certificate of participation to you. Uh, can we have Dr. Upinder Kaur, please? Uh, we are really fortunate enough to have you in this webinar and uh, such a renowned personality. And you have Amazing. shared uh, such a huge knowledge in machine learning. And you have discussed about the 10 trends in artificial intelligence and machine learning. You also enlightened us about the purpose of neural network in machine learning. And you also said about the what are, will be the perceptor procedure in the neural networks. And you have also discussed the principle of component analysis here. And uh, we are very uh, delighted with this talk. And uh, we are. Uh, and Thank you so much. Uh, this certification of appropriation and uh, thank you, sir. It is it's my pleasure. It's my great pleasure and uh, I would uh, be very gratitude from Professor Marchand to give me uh, one hour, one hour la uh, later uh, more one hour more to talk about uh, this talk and excuse me if uh, there is some interruptions and problems during the lecture. Me, dear Professor Marchand. Uh, thank you so much, uh, and please accept my apology for that. Thank you, thank you for all of you uh, to attend in this session. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Is there any questions? Uh, I will be uh, very uh, uh, grateful to uh, answer or or finish my conversation. Okay. Uh, we're actually running on a very tight schedule, so uh, I think we're going to have to move forward to our next session. Uh, okay. But thank you so much for such a detailed session. I think it was very useful thank for you. our audience. Thank you so much for thank being here. Thank uh, you so much. All right, thank guys. So we're going to oh. move forward to our next session, but before that, I'm seeing a lot of concern among audience uh, regarding the feedback forms. Uh, I would like to remind everyone that we are going to post a link for the feedback form here in a little bit in the chat session. So uh, those will be sent out to you. There are going to be two different feedback forms. One would be for day one and there would be second one for today's session. So please fill both of those forms and provide us your feedback. Um, we are going to post them here shortly. And with that, we're going to uh, welcome our next speaker, Dr. Meher Chand. Us. Uh, let's welcome our very own Dr. Meher Chand, who is a researcher, a writer, author, public speaker, innovator, and a mathematician. Uh, he has been a part of BFGI for several years now.
Dr. Meher Chand has focused his research interest in uh, fractional calculus and its applications, mathematical modeling, numerical methods, computational mathematics, special functions, uh, hypergeometric functions, and mathematical physics. He has over 70 research publications and has been invited as an honorable guest speaker for over 20 different talks. Uh, Dr. Meher Chand has taken the teaching job as an absolute passion and has always put the best step forward to aid students learning. Uh, he has over 50 YouTube tutorials for students to gain a better understanding of mathematics. Dr. Meher Chand has also honored over 35 workshops and conferences with his presence. He has organized numerous webinars to reach out to as much audience as possible. And I think that speaks highly of his passion regarding teaching. Uh, BFGI is blessed to have such a pro qualified person with us. Uh, please, guys, let's welcome Dr. Meher Chand to our today's webinar. Uh, thanks, ma'am. Uh, first of all, congratulations to all the committee members to organize such a wonderful uh, webinar on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, I will try to present uh, what is machine learning, why machine learning, uh, real uh, world applications of machine learning, different algorithms of machine learning, softwares for machine learning, etc. And I hope uh, this talk will be uh, fruitful for the participant. And uh, first of all, I would like to share my uh, presentation. OK. Uh, so uh, there is a first question, what is machine learning? And I, I think uh, all the things have been discussed, but I will give a brief uh, uh, details about these uh, questions and then uh, we discuss more about uh, machine learning. Machine learning teaches a computer to what uh, comes naturally to human and animals learn from experience. A uh, machine learning algorithms use computational methods to learn information directly from the data. Why? Uh, what is the importance of machine learning or uh, why machine learning? The aim of the machine learning is to build a model that makes decision based on evidence in the presence of uncertainty. As adaptive algorithms identify patterns in the data and computer learns from the observations, when exposed to more observations, the computer improves its decision making performance. More data, more questions, better answer. Uh, machine learning algorithms find uh, natural pattern in the data and generate insight and uh, help uh, you make better decisions and predictions. They are used very day to make uh, critical decisions in a medical diagnosis, uh, stock trading, energy load forecasting and more. Uh, media sites rely on machine learning to shift uh, through millions of options to give you song or movies. Uh, recommendations, uh, retailers use it to gain insight to their customers purchasing behavior. So these are the real world applications which already has been discussed and uh, I come to the next level. When should you use machine learning? This is a very important question. OK, so consider uh, using machine learning uh, when you have a complex task or problem involving a large amount of data and a uh, lot of variables, but uh, no existing formula for equation. Uh, for example, uh, machine learning is a good option if you need to handle situations uh, like you can see in this uh, diagram. Handwritten rules and equations are too, uh, too complex uh, as uh, face recognition and speech recognition. And in the second figure, you can see at this place uh, uh, the rules of a task are constantly changing is uh, uh, you can find in the detection from tra tra transactions record and in the third diagram at this place you can see the nature of the data keeps changing and the program needs to adapt is in uh, uh, automated trading energy demand forecasting and uh, predicting shaping trends how machine learning works uh, as you can see at this place uh, uh, machine learning uh, uh, divided in two part one is uh, unsupervised learning and second you can say uh, supervised learning uh, okay and in the case of super learning uh, supervised learning there is uh, 
two things uh, always uh, one is uh, input and other is output both the things will be available in our super, uh, in our data and we want to uh, learn uh, these data uh, for the machine learning and there will be always a supervised uh, just like a teacher and uh, uh, from these uh, input and output uh, we can train a uh, machine and in the case of uh, unsupervised uh, th there is uh, only inputs so there is uh, no label no uh, no output uh, 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 just like uh, group and interpret data based only on input data there is always input uh, so I will not go uh, more detail about uh, unsupervised uh, and supervised learning because the, all these things has been already discussed by Professor Hamad. Uh, and after uh, what uh, we can do uh, in the case of uh, uh, unsupervised learning because there is uh, only a data and for the analysis of uh, unsupervised learning we use uh, clustering algorithms and uh, supervised learning we have uh, two different parts. One is uh, regression and other is uh, classifications and further there are different algorithms for clustering for classification for regressions okay so you can see at this place uh, using supervised learning to predict heart attack uh, we can use this one i suppose uh, clinicians want to predict whether uh, some will have a heart attack within a year they have data on previous patients including age, weight, height, and blood pressure. Uh, they know whether the previous patients had a heart attack within a year. So the problem is combining the existing data into a model that can predict whether a new person will have heart attack within a year. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, when we use the supervised uh, learning, in that case, we have input as well as output and we can say uh, output is just like a label now uh, uh, the, uh, this is the technique for the clustering we have a lot of data at this place you can see and by using the clustering we divide this information into groups for the same categories and then we apply the different algorithms to train the machine how do you decide which algorithm to use this is a very uh, difficult question and uh, uh, every everyone who is willing to uh, interested to train a machine so first he need to understand uh, which method is algorithm or uh, is there any uh, uh, special method uh, from which we can do easiest way so choosing the right algorithm can uh, seem overwhelming uh, there are dozens of uh, supervised and unsupervised machine learning algorithms uh, and each take a different approach to learning. So uh, there is no best method or one size fits all. Uh, finding the right algorithm is uh, partly just a trial or error. Uh, even a high experienced data scientist can't tell whether the algorithm will work without uh, uh, trying it out. But algorithms selection uh, also depends on the size and the types of data you are working with, the insights you want to get uh, from the data and how those insights will be used. So uh, this is the algorithm uh, uh, for the machine learning. Uh, you can see at this place uh, the supervised uh, learning have uh, uh, as I discussed earlier classification and regression and unsupervised learning have only clustering. So these are different algorithms we use uh, for the classification. Uh, this is a spotter vector machine. Then we have discriminant analysis, Navier Bayes, nearest neighborhood. As in the uh, first day, uh, Professor uh, Martin used this technique for his uh, uh, research and uh, on the other hand uh, right hand side we can see clustering there are some algorithms we which are used for the clustering uh, which make the different type of groups and uh, all these have a different approach there is k means k medians fuzzy c means hierarchical gaussian mixture a neural network and hidden markov model uh, this also was used by professor martin in his talk okay and for the uh, regression there are uh, these uh, algorithms uh, first is uh, linear regression svr gpr example methods the decision tree neural networks so these are the basic algorithms which are used for the machine learning and uh, uh, 
Uh, there are also more techniques are going to be developed, uh, just like uh, uh, Professor Hanna uh, recommended the um, uh, natural inspired algorithms for the uh, modification or magnify the results. So uh, along with the uh, new techniques are being developed, uh, but uh, for the beginning, uh, we need uh, these basic algorithms to start the machine learning, to train the machine learning. Uh, okay, uh, at this place, I am targeting linear regression workflow. How the machine will, uh, I choose uh, from uh, this one. Uh, this is the for the regression because uh, all the algorithms uh, to discuss here in a very short time is very difficult. So I will uh, discuss at this uh, uh, place uh, linear regression. So come to at this place. Uh, what is the uh, linear regression workflow or how we can implement? So uh, uh, this workflow is very necessary to implement uh, algorithms and uh, uh, the different algorithms will be implemented, but uh, there are some uh, common uh, uh, techniques uh, which will be used uh, for the machine learning. Okay, so at the first uh, step, what we need import the data into a data set array, and after that, uh, uh, in the second level, create uh, fitted a model. Then, uh, uh, in the third step, uh, locate and remove outer layers. And uh, in the fourth step, uh, simplify the model. And uh, in the first level, predict the response to the new data. And uh, when the prediction is uh, uh, correct according to our desire, then we can share our model. So this is the uh, these are the steps uh, for the linear regression flow. And in the same way, we can implement for the other algorithms for the machine learning. Okay. So now. Uh, I am, uh, you can, I think, uh, see the MATLAB software at this space. Okay, I am resharing this one. This is the first level. Uh, I uh, Now I will present through the MATLAB how the MATLAB can be useful for the machine learning. So at the first level, what we see, uh, I am opening this one. Uh, okay. OK, thank you. So uh, uh, this is the uh, first level. Uh, the data which will be available for you will be in the Excel form or in other. But uh, I uh, deal with the here. The data is available in the Excel file. So this is the name of the file. Uh, you can see at this place, which is in Excel file. And uh, by using this function, we can import the data in the MATLAB. And uh, when we run this one, uh, so you can see that the information uh, is there. OK, uh, so th th uh, this is the data which I have uh, at this place. So at this place, uh, we can import the data and uh, you can see that there are multiple variables. So one by one, we discuss how we can uh, magnify or adjust this uh, uh, or we can prepare this data for our uh, statical analysis or machine learning. So at the second level, uh, uh, we make the uh, we use this function uh, read table. OK, and uh, then after we have uh, uh, X uh, read uh, function and by using this function, what we do here, uh, there will be one is uh, output and uh, other will be input. So uh, when I will run here, uh, see this one because the data we need two things. One is input and other is output and it's also necessary to remember that the input uh, will depend on different parameters just like uh, I want to train the machine that uh, machine can detect about uh, the figure that uh, this is a figure of a any kind of animal like just like a cow. So the label is cow, but uh, there are different parameters uh, size, uh, uh, parts of body, uh, head, uh, eyes, uh, tail, uh, four legs. So uh, this these are the inputs for the X variable. So uh, when I run this one, OK, so there uh, this will split the uh, previous the, this data into the prepared data. OK, so as uh, and you can see at this place when I open this uh, Y variable. OK, so you can see that this is the only output from the imported data. And uh, 
uh, when I open the X, you can see these are the different uh, parameters. The X will depend upon this is the first parameter. Okay, uh, this is the second and third, four and five. So this is the these are the just inputs. And uh, Y is the output and uh, from uh, this input and output uh, machine will recognize about uh, uh, which we give the information and uh, the machine will trend on these inputs and as well as uh, the output which you can see at its place. Uh, so this is the first level and uh, after that. OK, uh, we come to the next level. This is the second level you can see uh, after that we have to fit uh, the model. Uh, so at this place you can see this is the least square. Uh, method is used here, but I will not go more detail about the list scale because I have time constraint. Uh, so uh, this is very quite simple. Uh, uh, most important thing in the MATLAB is uh, all the functions which are required or other uh, algorithms which I discussed uh, in the previous uh, uh, slide. Uh, these are available in the MATLAB and we can easily use this one. So when I uh, use this function uh, this will uh, fit the least square method okay so i can run here and uh, we can see the results at this place you can see these are the outcomes uh, linear regression model is implemented at this place and uh, these are the results uh, and but we need to uh, analysis analyze these result, uh, outcomes. OK, so. <coughs> P values uh, T state uh, S A and uh, at the bottom you can see uh, more information about this data. OK, but uh, you need to understand uh, these parameters uh, or outcomes uh, which you can see at its place. Uh, P values uh, uh, constant uh, models. Uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, or, or number of observations are 100. Error degree of freedom is 67, and uh, root mean squared error are 4.66. Similarly, we have R squared, adjust R squared. So uh, these uh, results uh, uh, are required for the machine learning. But uh, uh, to understand the meaning of uh, these uh, uh, outcomes, we need sound background of the statics also so uh, the mathematics background is also necessary because otherwise if we have don't uh, good uh, sound knowledge about the statistical analysis then all these uh, this type of uh, outcomes are not fruitful or not uh, there is no use if without uh, background of the statistical analysis or the results which we use for the machine learning so the importance of mathematics play very important in the machine learning and uh, big data or uh, artificial intelligence also. So after that, uh, uh, th this is the readable set and uh, step by uh, step wise LM is also there. And by using this one to specify a model using step seven and uh, a, a table or database array TB1 of predator, suppose you want to start from a constant and have a linear model upper bound, then we can use uh, this. And uh, but you can see that the result of uh, least square or either uh, uh, you can use this one. OK, uh, at this place we are using this function and in the previous we are using uh, this one. So the result uh, there will be a little difference between by using this uh, in this way. OK, uh, but uh, that depend upon the data and which type of results uh, or we need required for the machine learning. Uh, next we have terms matrix. So this is also important uh, to for the results at this place. We have uh, this is the data set is important at this place and uh, 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 we have redefined the data by using this uh, T parameter and uh, after that uh, when we <coughs> run this one. Uh, OK, I will play this one and uh, we can see the result and. Uh, OK, these are the uh, information which is imported at its place. OK. And uh, uh, what is the beneficial uh, benefit of uh, this uh, type of uh, 
when we include the T parameter to re redefine the data. Now the response variable is the first term in the <coughs> data array, data set array, and uh, specify the same linear model. So at this place, uh, the result will be in these uh, terms, uh, one plus six plus as and some occurs uh, using the terms of matrix. So this is the next level of the symmetric. And uh, uh, when we run this one, okay, and uh, we can see uh, this is the modified. You can see at this place. Uh, the linear regression model, which is a uh, refined uh, linear regression model at its base, and y is equal to 1 plus x1, which is a linear and degree is 1. And estimated coefficients you can see at its place, and uh, number of observations in this uh, data is 94, and all the parameters you can see at its base, which are in the previous, and uh, you have to understand the p values uh, r squared and uh, error freedom uh, and the meaning uh, and the importance uh, of uh, this uh, statistical analysis is very important to train the machine learning. Then we have a fit model. OK, so. Uh, and this is the fit model function and. Uh, uh, when we run this one. The file is the same which was used in the previous uh, algorithm. And when we run and we can see, OK, so these uh, you can see at its place uh, linear regression model uh, robust fit is used at its place. So uh, I want to explain what is robust fit. I use uh, fit alum uh, with the robust opt name value pair to create a model that is a little affected by outliers. Robust fitting save you the trouble of manually discarding outliers. However, step does not work and with the robust fitting, uh, this means that uh, when you use robust fitting, you cannot search stepwise for a good model. So there are different techniques to use for the fit model. Uh, list square fit is there, robust fit is there, stepwise fit is there, and we can use one of them according to our model and uh, uh, because uh, uh, all these uh, play an important role according to their technique uh, because each one have a different technique and uh, you can see that at this place uh, x1 x2 x3 and up to x8 and uh, the results are same and uh, these are the outcomes and these will be always uh, uh, same parameters but uh, corresponding value will be different uh, at this place the observations are 100 uh, error degree of freedom you can say 91 root mean is 5.1 so uh, upon this outcome we can uh, trend the uh, machine how is uh, this is optimum and how much is more accurate uh, for the prediction so upon this uh, these outcomes we can decide uh, uh, the algorithm which we are using our um, best uh, we will give us a best prediction. And after that, uh, we have a uh, uh, third level. And in this level, all the uh, steps uh, have been included. So examine the quality. This is very important part. OK, so uh, after the first and second level, we have to examine the quality. And uh, for that purpose, uh, we have to I uh, follow these uh, uh, techniques uh, which you can see at this place. First is a model display. Then we will apply ANOVA, which is a very uh, uh, familiar in the use of a statistical analysis. Then we diagnose, take uh, plots, uh, and after that, uh, reduce model quality training the data. And after that, uh, plot to understand predictor effects. And after that, uh, plot to understand trans effect. And uh, uh, if uh, we achieve our target or the required label or outcome, uh, then we can uh, share our model and otherwise we have to change the model. Uh, change the model means we have to follow other techniques to modify the results. So at this place, uh, this is the first model display. I have some time, okay. Uh, I will take only 10 minutes more, okay? Within 10 minutes, I will try to finish this one. 
so this is the first model okay so at this place you can see a linear regression model shows several diagnostic when you enter its name or enter a display uh, this display gives some of the basic information to check whether the fitted model represent the data adequately so this is the x input this is the y and this is the model is fit by using this function and we can see at this place uh, excuse me okay so you can see at this place uh, this is a file level uh, linear model is there uh, then we have uh, second uh, then after we will apply the ANOVA okay so uh, we will apply the ANOVA x is there you can see y is this one and fit phenomenon these steps are the previous okay and then after we apply this ANOVA on the the model okay so when we apply the ANOVA for the same and we can check the outcome so okay this is the outcome after using the ANOVA and uh, these are the results uh, you can say F and uh, mean square DF uh, you can see also error uh, error means the exact and approximate how uh, if error is very small uh, then we uh, uh, the, then the model is accurate and if error is zero then we can say the model is uh, uh, perfect or give the 100% accuracy. Uh, then after we have uh, how, how we can diagnose. Uh, uh, then after we will uh, diagnose the plot and uh, diagnose plot to help you identify outliers and uh, see other problems in your model or fit. For example, uh, we have this example. OK, so uh, this is the first level and uh, because uh, when I run this one, uh, different uh, ports will be there. Okay, so I am running this one. And uh, what do we see the outcome? Okay, so this is the first figure you can see at this place and uh, third writing support we can see at this place. Okay, so I will not go more detail about this one. Uh, then after we have residual, this is the fourth step. So you can see uh, different figures. So this is the first figure, uh, histogram of the residues. Uh, I close this one. Uh, this is the maximum size you can see at this place. Uh, first figure. Then uh, we have a second figure you can see at this place because uh, uh, residual and this is the fit curve and uh, you can see the constant of the data okay uh, th this is the probability data and a normal probability plot of residuals you can see in this diagram and then we have this uh, third diagram uh, this is the uh, histogram of residuals after modify you can see okay and uh, this is the after that fourth diagram you can see at this place a uh, plot of residual versus uh, lagged residuals uh, this is a, a residue of 40 minus 1 and residue 3. And then after we have uh, uh, the fifth diagram of plot of residue versus fitted values, you can see at its place. Uh, these all, all these are fitted values uh, and uh, residues you can see. Okay. So uh, uh, when uh, you plot the uh, 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 there, uh, there is some uh, tendency for larger fitted values to have uh, larger residues. Perhaps the model error are proportional to the major values. And then after we have uh, fifth step. Okay, you can see at this place. Now time is uh, very less for me. Okay, this is uh, figure one and figure two. Uh, cylinders and adjusted MPG you can see in this diagram. Uh, okay, so at this place you can see a weight and centers are there and uh, these are the predicted MPG and corresponding values by changing selecting this one. Uh, 
by moving uh, for the weight according to at which weight you want to select the model. OK, you can see the changes and on the right hand side also. And when I change the cylinder, uh, you can see this one uh, this depends upon the standards you are using four level or six level or eight levels uh, due to lack of time i could not go more detail about this one okay so when you change this one the corresponding standards the values of standards are being also changed so according to this one you can fit your model fifth and then after we have uh, Sixth. So in this diagram, you can see uh, that these are the same steps and which I told in the uh, first uh, slide and all these steps will be you have to examine and then after you can predict the results. OK, so adjustment model you can see at a space and fit uh, here. You can see that 95 percent conversion bounds and fit y is equal to you can see at this rate 85.8 uh, 376 into x this is the adjusted data and you can see at this place so in this way you can use uh, these techniques and if uh, you uh, your outcomes are more close to uh, your prediction uh, or uh, your required results then after you can declare your model or you can share the model. So most, most important thing is that uh, I want to let you know more thing about all the models or the techniques, algorithms which you want to use for the machine learning are available. Uh, at this space, I am entering here uh, machine learning okay so when i enter this one uh, this is a uh, very interesting uh, all the beginners uh, or the participants uh, who are willing to work by using matlab and you can see that uh, at this place uh, machine learning all the parts are here for supervised learning unsupervised learning example learning okay all the algorithms are available at this way. supervised learning. We have linear progression, non-linear, generalized linear. Okay, all the Navier based classification is very important and very useful. And this is the uh, nearest neighbor and the model building. And uh, you can easily uh, go through all these uh, linear model uh, for linear regression. We have multiple uh, linear regression, multivariate, stepwise. All these algorithms are available and you can start. And also there are various examples are given in the MATLAB itself. Uh, this is the first step which uh, <coughs> examples and how to use. OK, so the, the, these are various examples are given at this place. Similarly, you can find out various examples for uh, clustering and uh, surprise learning and uh, uh, unsupervised learning both are available uh, in the MATLAB itself and also examples and models are available just we need to <coughs> some basic uh, computing uh, techniques uh, should be developed in uh, ourselves and along with we need <coughs> sorry we need uh, uh, basic knowledge uh, sound knowledge about uh, statistical analysis along with we should have uh, background about uh, mathematics uh, as uh, a professor Ozer expand uh, some uh, mathematics uh, uh, important mathematics uh, topics which are very helpful and useful in the machine learning deep learning uh, and uh, other areas also okay so i hope uh, this is very useful and uh, you can uh, if i conclude overall uh, two things are very important. Uh, one is uh, uh, computational skill. Uh, by using uh, any kind of software like uh, uh, MATLAB, you can use uh, Maple software. There is R software. There is uh, Scilab. 
and python is also there we can use one of them and uh, uh, scilab r software and python these are open source softwares but uh, uh, important thing is uh, uh, statistical analysis uh, a skill as well as uh, computational skills these are both very important uh, for the machine learning okay so uh, there are some more details uh, you can use uh, most popular machine learning softwares are here uh, you can use uh, uh, this one okay you can see there are many uh, split learn uh, platform is uh, linux mac uh, cost uh, this is free and uh, written in language python uh, Cython, C, C++. These are the features: classification, regression, clustering, uh, pre-processing, model selection, dimensional reduction, and also uh, you can say uh, PyTorch is there. Python, uh, the platform is uh, Python, and uh, uh, auto uh, grade model, optimum model, and then models can be established. So you can see these are uh, all these are available in. Uh, open source and free available okay so this one is uh, very costly and uh, difficult to purchase so uh, the beginners can start by using these free softwares which are available okay and uh, when you trend by using any software you can uh, use one of them uh, and my talk is over now and i uh, let you know about if uh, further you want to contact me uh, you can visit. Uh, this is my website. Uh, very simple. DR. DRMeherchand.com This is for future reference. If anyone have interest, uh, you can contact me. And... Uh, uh, the, these all my academic profiles you can see uh, at this place and if you are uh, willing to contact me you can uh, contact at this place uh, 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 this is my email address uh, this is my skype and these are the my personal contact number okay uh, so uh, also, you can follow me on uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. So all the informations are available on the website. Uh, and I welcome all the participants who are willing to interest to work in the machine learning, deep learning and big data. And uh, we are, uh, I hope, a uh, big uh, group will be there, uh, uh, which will work in the uh, they, these areas of machine learning, uh, big learning, uh, big data, and uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this my lecture, and I hope uh, all the information uh, which I present here will be uh, surely fruitful for all the audience. But uh, due to the time constraint, uh, I uh, I have to skip uh, many informations. Uh, thank you very much for uh, attending my lecture. So that was our last expert panelist, Dr. Meher Chan. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful insight into AI and ML. Uh, once again, I'd like to express my gratitude to you for your involvement in webinar, uh, both as the organizing team and as a presenter. Let's take a moment to look at this webinar in a glimpse. And for that, for the last time, I will invite Dr. Upinder Kaur with us, who will be presenting the certificate to Dr. Meher Chan and will also be presenting a brief report on the webinar. Dr. Upinder Kaur. We are really grateful and blessed to have a professor as a qualified and a passionate. And Dr. Meher Chan has a great enthusiasm towards research and uh, always motivated us to do more efforts for the benefits of the society. I'm really grateful to have a, such kind of personality among us and uh, it's a token of appreciation uh, from the Department of Computer Science Public College to the Dr. Nature. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would uh, like to uh, introduce the today's report. The today's webinar on artificial intelligence and machine learning was conducted by public institutions in association 
with the society of engineering sciences and technology morocco fiction research group ajep and uh, national institute of electronics and information chandigarh and uh, uh, in of electrical and electronics engineer uh, canada section and uh, this webinar has wrapped up after two day interaction uh, with the, and many knowledgeable experience and a promise of yet another interaction in future will be there and uh, one for, uh, our first day begin with the welcome speech of dr amandeep singh dean sciences of babapuri group of institutions and uh, our internal analyst dr manish goel was also a slight optus by audience he mentioned that had registered for the webinar for and 29 people expert analyst for this session uh, dr yamun jam uh, kohati and he served as a director over there and dr hana hajmi president morocco society of engineering sciences and and last panelist for the day one is the dr k Mart uh, k martin and uh, he is from uh, koran university coimbatore and we faced some technical difficulties due to dr hana hajmi uh was not able to join us but he did reach out to us difficulties so dr hanachi was not able to join we didn't witness very useful discussion on the and uh, the topics are discussed on the very first day it is on required algorithms in the machine learning and in the end uh, dr martin has uh, introduced us the uh, computer vision algorithm based on hand gestured technology for the virtual reality and applications and uh, we also had some questions from our audience and our speakers were more happy to answer such that such questions at the end of each session the certification of presentation was Uh, present certification of participation was presented to the keynote speaker by Dr. Mehar Chand. We successfully completed our first day of the seminar with a vote of thanks from Ms. Ritender Gill, who was host. And we continue our second webinar today with different expert panelists. The session begin with a brief introduction of the organizers. I want to the inauguration by Dr. Manish Chandal, uh, HOD Computer Science Department. and after giving a warm welcome to our attendees and panelists we begin our session our exposed panelists from the day were dr ozan auzer uh, he is from turkey and associate professor of karikali university turkey dr hamid uh, research associate islamic azad university iran and uh, the panelists spoke a length of on the various topics and uh, Uh, Dr. Ozan speak on the topic of the importance of mathematics uh, in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and Dr. Hamid spoke on the topic of machine learning trends and its applications, and Dr. Nechan enlightened us with the supervised and unsupervised learning using MATLAB tool, and uh, it was very interesting session. and was very much appreciated by all the attendees. The certificate of participation was presented by. Uh, Dr. Vinder Kaur, and uh, after that, the valedictor speech will be given by the uh, Dr. Manish Gupta, uh, Dean uh, Research and Innovation, Baba Fareed Group of Institution, and we look forward for him to overall discussion and uh, enlighten the views about the researches going on in the institute. And uh, I uh, over to Mr. Vinder, ma'am. Uh, to look forward for the thank you pindar ma'am i will now invite our last speaker dr manish gupta dean research and innovation bfpi to present the valedictory speech can we please have dr gupta online with us thank you thank you so much uh, ms gul gil uh, it is a really uh, great honor for me to be here in this uh, session and uh, i was very much pleased to listen to the uh, report of the conference also and uh, here just 
uh, to give the officially first of all i will I, because you have given me two uh, points to discuss in this uh, in this part first is i have to tell about the research and innovation and then i have to propose the vote of thanks also so distinguished guests professors research scholars faculty members from all over the world the press and media and my dear students a very good afternoon to all of you with deep sense of gratitude i had a privilege to propose this vote of thanks to all the eminent personalities on this second day of international webinar on artificial intelligence and machine learning dear friends science today is an integral part of our lives while we are recognizing the medical and technological advancements that have improved the quality of our lives we are less aware that these all developments arose due to the research in basic sciences and now it is an era of the quantum computing we are entering just into the era of the quantum computing and i think so that artificial intelligence machine learning and 5g technologies are all only the bridges which will fill the gap between the uh, classical computing and the uh, quantum computing so moving towards the research part of power of group of institutions being a private player as a self self financed institution if i talk about research and development this is the biggest weakness of any private institution because it requires a huge investment in terms of time and money but on the other hand power of group of institution is playing its role very actively and is doing great work since few years in different and various fields and i can say almost every field of the basic sciences basic arts and commerce and management also in this regard i would like to share it with you the faculty of power of group of institutions has published more than 150 research papers in national and international journals last year only and these these are also well cited also moreover about seven research projects have been submitted to the various government agencies in collaboration with bark mumbai nit jalandhar punjab university patiala and more and i want to mention that bfgi had developed r&d policy through which it provides the grant to its faculty members to present the paper in conferences under this policy up till now more than 15 faculty members had availed this grant and last year only this uh, grant has been given to some faculty members who present their papers in australia ireland canada and china also baba bhi group of institution always support the faculty for their capacity building and and the efficacy of it is that in 2019 itself more than 100 faculty member have participated in various faculty development programs and workshops and these all faculty development uh, programs are outside our campus only so uh, to accomplish this research motto to accomplish this uh, to have a good quality research in a campus the subscription of databases are very much required in the campus so taking it in a view the management has uh, taken the initiative and we have sus- subscribed the world reputed journals in our power of group of institutions that are from ieee and absco and we have also the subscription of scopus also for 3 months last year so uh, we have also uh, the subscription of ebooks which has the consortium of 1.6 lakhs books as well we have also subscribed the inflip that the government of india initiative through which the faculty and students are taking very much uh, you can say benefit from it now the the faculty of babafi group of institution is also working in the extension activities extension activities related to the research only so that they can tell the research of their research to the uh, students to the society so the in the extension activities till date baba with group of institution has been awarded five inspire science camps by department of science and technology government of india in which more than 600 meritorious students participated and got a chance to interact with renowned scientists all over the nation the search summits international conferences seminars fdp's workshop expert lectures are the regular features of our activity calendar which helps in building the students and faculty acumen for the focused research 
now the intellectual property is the is is the uh, integral part of any scientist so ipr protects the plays a pivotal role in gaining the competitive advantages in terms of technology gains for achieving higher search growth and then to drive to the market so we here in our campus through our ipr policy i here also want to tell you that because we are in somehow a backward area in this region we were the first persons four year five year back to uh, to uh, to have the ipr policy so baba bhil group of institution through its ipr policy supports the faculty and students not only in filing the iprs but also helps in technology transfers it gives me immense pleasure to share you all that our students and faculty is involved in technology development and last year itself we had filed five patent applications in the respective patent offices and all of them are published and two of them are in the examination stage so now the technology transfer it is it is it is always the dream of a scientist to have the technology to be transferred so uh, uh, joining all the dots here we have also established the school of entrepreneurship which is the major pillar pillar of public group of institutions this school has continuous interaction with various government bodies and departments to enable the students to become job providers rather than job seekers the organizing of entrepreneurship awareness camps the boot camps in association with government of india through department of science and technology and through entrepreneurship development institution is a routine affair of the school the active participation of school of entrepreneurship in government of india and got government of punjab initiatives like startup india punjab yatra related to startup india gives the ample exposure to the students to become an entrepreneur the school of entrepreneurship provides business support services like detail project report writing the detail project project report business plan development technology validation marketing and sales iprs hr and legal issues etc which are very much essential for the body entrepreneurs and startups so this was all about uh, the research and development part i have just have the glimpses of the research and development part of this one uh, now just going on to the conference here really after uh, seeing uh, or after listening the uh, report from dr upinder i was it was a very enthusiasm it was a very uh, good response overwhelming response i can say so i am proud to hear that this two day international webinar had attracted the participation from 29 countries moreover it is not about the 29 countries uh, you can say the success of this conference this webinar you can say that all over uh, in india also it had covered all over the india okay and now they, uh, i have came to know that about uh, the delegates from about 28 states and five union territories had participated in this so uh, at least uh, uh, i in my life had not heard this type of figures i, I to be very 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 loyal ठीक है दिस टाइप ऑफ फिगर ऑलवेज क्रिएट इंथ्यूजियाजम इन एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो फॉर दिस आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू कंग्रेचुलेट दी ऑर्गेनाइजर्स आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू ऑर्गेनाइज दी कमिटीज हेयर सो कमिंग ऑन टू दी ऑफिशियल यू कैन से वोट ऑफ थैंक्स सेरेमनी आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्रेस आर डीपेस्ट ग्रेजिट्यूड टू सम ऑफ दी एमिनेंट पर्सनैलिटीज हु डिलीवर दी की नोट एड्रेस इन दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस बी एफ जी आई अटैच इज ए मैंस वैल्यू to all the uh, to the wisdom and words of advice of all the keynote address and we are indeed fortunate to have you with us in this event i want to thank the sponsors and collaborations of this conference specifically i triple e computer society uh, me mscst nie elit and sirg and uh, we hope that your collaborations and your sponsorship will be with us in future events also i sincerely like to thank uh, dr mehran chand dr upinder and department of computer science and mathematics who took the initiative to organize this international webinar in this difficult pandemic situations words are inadequate to express my gratitude to our honorable chairman baba fit group of institutions for his valuable support and leading from the front to make this this type of events happen i also want to thank him who not only gave us the independent hand to organize such events but also motivate us to organize 
such academic events throughout the year. This conference would have would not have reached this level of excellence without the support of the member of staffs. So here I also want to thank them that without uh, is, uh, taking uh, taking so much of efforts uh, in this busy, in their busy schedule, they uh, made made this conference this webinar is successful. On behalf of the management and Babur Group of Institution, I thank all the students invited talkies. scholars and participants for attending the conference to make it as successful and i hope this deliberation held in this two days should have germinated ample of research ideas in your minds i want to thank the persons from press and media who are always very helpful in recognizing the views of views and efforts of baba bhai group of institutions thank you all thank you very much thank you all Thank you, Dr. Manish, for wrapping this up nicely. Uh, I would like to remind everyone one more time that the feedback forms have been posted in the chat section, so please find those posted there and don't forget to fill those out for us. Uh, we are waiting for to hear from you. And if you are having any technical errors again, please reach out to us. We would be happy to assist you with that. Um, and with that, we have now come to conclude the two-day international webinar on AI and ML. Um, the webinar witnessed some of the leading scientists who shared their expertise with us. Once again, I want to thank all our expert panelists from both the days. Uh, I'm thankful to the organizing team, Dr. Upinder Kaur, Dr. Shalu Gupta, Dr. Meher Chand, and Mr. Gurpreet Singh, who spent many weeks worth of efforts in this webinar. A special thanks to Mr. Talvinder Singh, who took care of all the technical aspects of the webinar. On behalf of all the audience, I would like to thank Department of Computer Science, the FGI, and all our collaborators for bringing this webinar to us. And finally, a big thanks to all the attendees for being with us, staying with us throughout the session, and patiently dealing with the technical issues as well. I hope we did fine by you. Uh, we look forward to have more interactions of this kind in future. Uh, with that, I will ask your permission to conclude this webinar. Best wishes from Baba Fried Group of Institutions. Stay well, stay connected. Thank you so much.